This is Freddie Bassey wishing all you pencil neck geeks out there a merry, merry Christmas. <laughs> Wrestling hey, buddies want to be your buddies. Hey, buddy. Buddy. You got me mad now. We are in the middle dead smack of the holiday season, and you are celebrating it here with the Wrestling Compadre Slamcast on Dragon Wagon Radio. Follow us everywhere. Get all our information at CompadreShow.com for all things Wrestling Compadres. Patreon.com slash Compadres for exclusive bonus episodes, videos, and the new book club that's just started. In the studio, I am your host, Jay Washington. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Mr. J Washington. I am also the host of the Mad Titan podcast. We got a nice little group in the studio with us. Uh, to my left, you've seen him in the feature film, Dave Made a Maze, available on Hulu. And he is the biggest fan of the On Your Mark show. Find him everywhere at Scott Narver. He's Scott Narver. Uh, inaccurate. They have not seen it. And also, Pod Dog is trying to eat my candy cane. He's got no personal boundaries. <laughs> Paul Dog has no boundaries, and you just heard him. He is the host of the Elaborate and Dungeons and Dragon Wagon, and the creator of the board web series. He's our amazing producer. He's at Liquid Jake. It's Jake Lloyd. Why? Why is Johnny not here? He said he was going to be here. That's what he said last week until no. he realized. Oh yeah, I'm not here. <laughs> no, he said last week. He's like, well, we're done. No more yeah. episodes. Yeah. This is it. It was Capadre it, shows. It was the week prior when we did our schedule. <laughs> And he was like, this is exactly this is, what my schedule is. He was like, this is it. I'm gone. The truth is that Johnny just doesn't listen. He doesn't listen when we talk with each other. And <laughs> he hates the holidays. Is he? He's a Grinch. I could see that. Yeah. Well, he's got he's got a girlfriend now, so he might be a little bit more. Wait, Johnny got a what? girlfriend now? Whoa, whoa, whoa. We, we're, not, we're not in Slamcast News yet. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a kind of a girlfriend Who now. Who bought so? him a blow up, though? No, she's real. No, come on. I, she, was at, I, she was at the tape into the she, she lives in Pakistan. I mean, you have not meet her. She goes to a different school, but she lives in Pakistan. He pulls out a photo of like a clearly clipped out of a magazine, <laughs> folded up. It's got like a sh- shard edge on it. Coming up later, y'all, we're going to have an exclusive. I can't believe you just blew up his spot. Sorry to interrupt, but I'm like, I wonder if Johnny's going to be like, Yo, what the heck, guys? Oh, you said he don't like the holidays. So I said, why he probably does. Also, he doesn't listen to the show, so he doesn't. He doesn't know, know yeah. anyway. He would never hear. It. Uh, we'll have an exclusive Wrestle Kingdom 13 rundown with New Japan Pro Wrestling commentator Mark Rozeka and our own Scott Narber coming up later. Also, make sure you guys go over to DragonWagonShop.com to get all your amazing compadres T-shirts, all things Dragon Wagon, and more. All right? Yeah, you're uh, too late to get your stuff inside in time for Christmas. But not too late to get your stuff for whatever happens in January. So bring in the new year with some amazing <laughs> Dragon Wagon merch. All right, so let's get right to it, y'all. Slamcast News. Well, now that Bumblebee's about to come out in theaters and he's let his hair grow back in a very weird fashion, John Cena is stepping back into a wrestling ring. He tweeted that he will be returning for the WWE live events between December 26th and January 14th, which means more than likely we might get him on a Raw or SmackDown. When is Rumble or Rumble? Uh, January. Late, mid-January? So then he's just going to come back for the road to the Rumble, which is uh, a very short road. It's like a, it's like a lane to the Rumble. Which well, is, he's not You turn onto that, and then you start your road to WrestleMania. He's not acknowledging that he's coming on a live TV yet. Oh, yeah, he did say live events. Oh, live, live events. events. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Well, then but that's why I said it, But that's why I said it's Everybody a Everybody goes to live events and be like, oh, cool, well, John yeah, Cena. He won't make it because the Royal Rumble this year, next year is January 27th. Oh, so, yeah, he'll definitely late. not be back for I that. I like his haircut. I think what people have an issue with is it's not so much the hair. It's that he looks like JBL and that he's very gaunt now in his neck because he's lost a lot of weight. Yes, he does. Yeah. So it doesn't look like normal John Cena. Yeah, it, it's like he's muscular, but he's not right. over First muscular. off, when was John Cena ever normal? That seems like a stretch. But you mean the prototype wasn't now. normal? I think maybe he's just uh, growing his hair out for his heel turn. Shut up. Maybe t- it's for Bumblebee 2. 
Yeah. Don't be surprised. Well, he's going to do a springboard stunner to Bumblebee in the sequel. <laughs> but he's not going to quite get all of it. But now he's got to he's got to start advertising hair products. You know what I'm saying? He's got to make that sponsorship money. Uh, a touch, already, maybe like a touch of gray. I could see him advertising. You know, he's already, Is that the TM drinking right now? Touch yeah, of gray? Touch of, a touch of Earl Grey. <laughs> I just want you all to know that Scott and Jake are having tea time together, and it looks beautiful. Scott has put his peppermint candy cane into his tea. Which, what other kind of candy which, canes are there? If you pay close there's attention. A, there's fruity ones, too. You've never what had the fruity candy canes? you never had those? No. Tons Guys, guys, that's it's not nice to talk about Johnny when he's not here. Uh, those of you who are listening, uh, paying attention, might know that around this time last year, when Dragon Wagon first started here, Scott Narver enjoyed the exact same beverage. And today he seemed really enthusiastic about it. He was like, well, where's a candy cane? I'm going to have to tea with my candy cane. Like, I feel like it's a tradition now. You've made it a tradition because yeah. you're that type of guy who you care about those things. Yeah, and you are too because you have the same candy canes from <laughs> oh, last year. Oh, yeah, that lets you know jar. you recycled a candy cane. No, no, so. I didn't, it's not really recycling. It's just they're still there. They, oh, I, actually, a pack of what, like 24? Yeah. And, so yeah. you, don't, you didn't even have a 24 people came over here to win a candy cane? Actually, I think cane. it was 100. It was 100 packs. Okay. There's probably about 24 left. Oh, okay, that's the whole different the set, one. And right all throughout the, the year, I see them, I'm like, I want a candy cane. No, they're so probably just, special. It's candy July. So you I can't have one in July. Right. You're like, I can't have one during the Independence Day weekend. Honestly, How dare I? I was telling Scott, like, the second we finished Thanksgiving dinner, I was like, oh, great, the candy canes are relevant again. They've just been <laughs> sitting there on the counter so long. Anyways, what else is going on in this Yeah, world? so also, again, the WWE's relationship with a lot of other companies is still happening. Johnny Gargano is going to return to Evolve to face Austin Theory at Evolve 120 on January 19th in New York. Now, it's a two-night event, and he will wrestle both nights, but his opponent for the 18th has not yet been named. This uh, is keeping John that nice Cena. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I actually love that they have this relationship with Evolve because, you know, we, you get opportunities to get more titles for guys who are on like i love the fact that the street pof- the street profits won the the titles there like the tag titles yeah. there mm-hmm. and like just that sort of shit i don't know it's good more more the merrier also you know any of the guys at nxt they got to be off for so long yeah. right like so they got to be able to do yeah. so like you got to figure that i mean i know that nxt all does their, live events and, but their, t- and their tapings course. are all done yeah so you figure good go work i feel I, I would imagine also it's really cool for everybody at evolve to have someone from NXT show up there and just share experiences, oh, yeah. tell stories, and like, oh, I learned this, or, you hells know, yeah. just the, the morale. Yeah. Well, yeah, you you learn the insides of the business you're trying to get to. And also for the NXT guys and girls, it allows them to work different than in the compounds of just the same people they see every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, wrestling in, wrestling companies are like ethnicities. The more we mix them together, the better everybody's going to be. Thanks, Bullworth. I'm looking at you, Jay. I, I you pre- and me, baby. I appreciate it, sexy. <laughs> Two former workers are going to have sex off air for the holidays to make a better. And we're trying Draven. to make a baby, which is really weird. It's going to be yeah. real awkward. Wait, what's your name again? It was Draven and. Oh, trauma. All oh, trauma. No, no, trauma. trauma. No, he just, trauma. He just, oh, he just like, says oh, things weird. Trauma. Yeah. Uh, I would. I wish his name was Ultrana, because that's what I thought he said. U L trauma, like Ultrama, like a mix of Ultron well, and y- trauma. Your baby will be drama. Drama. Oh shit. Speaking of a lot of drama, Jericho's Cruise 2 is uh, happening. That was you a know, stretch, but I like it. It's, it's it kind of no, it's it's a dramatic thing. You can't. You know. well, more details officially are coming in January. You can go to Chris They're going to Jer- fish on the cruise? I said more details officially. The second wave. The second wave. ChrisJerichoCruise.com if you want all the info on that. Scott, are you going to go? Uh, No. Why not? You don't want to be on Jericho's Cruise? Uh, <laughs> I worked on a cruise ship for four months. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Unless they're going to pay me to be on one. I don't... I, I could never, ever, 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 ever imagine going to vacation on a cruise ship after living on one. Is it that bad when you work and live with it? I, it's a floating mall. Oh, so it's nonstop. Just. Yeah, it just doesn't end. Like f- working on one, it's so it's so weird. I don't know what it's like to be a passenger. I've heard about it. Mm. You doing that for a week? You know that's all right. But I couldn't do it. I actually I couldn't do it. I really, I feel really shitty because I cannot remember our listener who got married on the first one. Yeah, I can't remember, can't his, remember name, his name. I don't even want to bring up his name to remind you because that's how terrible you are. And I'm going to let you sit. In I it. believe you mean terrible. Terrible. <laughs> I. So how do you like have days? How do your days off work? Well, in our scenario, we had a very, very, very uh, uh, spoiled schedule. We only performed at the end of the week. So while everyone who comes on a cruise ship, much like a, what I'm sure the Jericho cruise was, uh-huh. first off, everybody's recognizable. So it, when you have wrestlers on a cruise ship, like there's no hiding. Yeah. I don't know how they hide. 
I, I don't know if it's just like right out in the open, like, all right, everyone, go meet everyone, go say hi to Jerry the King Lawler, and get used to it. Don't bug him at every single pass. I feel like that has to happen sort of naturally because I, th- but also it's wrestling fans and some of them could be crazy, especially people who are paying to go do this. Sure. I, but I, I would it like must to get old because on the cruise right. ship, That's uh, what, what you experience is what everyone knows from the get go, you're introduced to the cruise director and yeah. the people that are in the bands and the dancers, like all that stuff's right in your face in the beginning. Us as the uh, second city people, we were not. Yeah. No one saw right. us till the end of the week, so yeah. they wanted to include us in shows beforehand. Yeah. Uh, so you had like, some anonymity. And I said, like, there's no point in doing that because they don't know who we are and they won't care. So it's, okay. it's basically like showing an NXT match to a WrestleMania crowd. Right. They, they won't. Okay, that makes sense. Because I always wondered how that goes. Like, And when they're on the Jericho Cruise, it's two weeks, right? Probably. It's about two it's, weeks? Uh, one to two weeks. Yeah, yeah one I, to two weeks. I can't imagine it's two weeks. I, I would say it's probably just like over a long weekend, I would assume. No. You think it's I, two I think, weeks? No, I, I you think motherfuckers take average, out on average, two weeks. <laughs> on average, cruises are a week. Yeah, average cruises are a week, no matter what. They're taking yeah. two cards out of that fucking mu- year-long playing deck? Because you're going somewhere. You're leaving from a port. Oh, yeah, you're, everything isn't just the Like, you're the leaving from boat. a port in the U.S. to somewhere outside the U.S. That's fair. All right. Well, For international water matches. Uh... <laughs> You know, you know, is wrestling even sanctioned there? It's probably illegal to even do that. Well, or inter- you could do it because inter- you don't need a license. International waters. Yeah, you just you don't need a wrestling license. International Anybody waters. Just go. If he doesn't have Paul Birchall on this next one, then this cruise ship can go <laughs> fuck, fuck it. itself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we draw Paul Birchall. Hopefully, Cardi saying gets released and just time she can show up. And That'd be over. rad. How <laughs> rad would that be if it'll, you go to this and then Paul Birchall you know hides what? and then shows it'll, up as the fucking pirate? It'll be less <laughs> rad when the boat actually gets I was taken over say, by Somali pirates. pirates. Yeah, that's going to be really gonna be awkward. Some Somali pirates. Like, like, where's your boots? We got Birchall. It's fine. No, that, and that's a new character introduction right there. It's a faction. Oh, my God. <laughs> new faction. The Som- <laughs> that is the only good thing I could ever come out of that crew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Slamcast news. <laughs> All right, y'all, it's the time of the week where we get to hear what you guys have been thinking about all week for you all that have called the Wrestling Compadres Hotline. And if you want to leave your questions on the hotline, call us, 747-666-5606. That's 747-666-5606. Or we can give you Jake Lloyd's personal number, and you can call him directly. Do it. I, I, you know what? I get so many calls from fucking creditors, it'll just get screened like the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to our first call. Hello, this is The Scoop, Russ Staley out of Champaign, Illinois. Uh, calling in regards to the lack of coverage of Ring of Honor being the elite in favor of TNA, and never mind the WWE, like which you can watch NXT, including the Takeovers and Two of Five Live on Hulu. Since uh, the politics of the company are just so whack, I've tuned out uh, and more than happy, especially with an NJPW subscription. Uh, in other stuff, uh, Biff Busick just changed his name back from Only Lork into that. Then you got Busick and Birch. Alliteration is always over. All right. Uh, that was a, a great transition from one topic to the other. Uh, I, although, I'm going to give you credit for the second heart. That's actually probably the best tag team name for uh, Only Lork. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Go back to being Busick. Um, so we get it. You don't like WWE. WWE stinks. But it's true. We don't cover a ton of Ring of Honor. We don't cover. I'll, I'll address this. Yeah, please yeah, do. I saying, that's like, why we're Scott. Especially because from the history of this, first off, it's Impact Wrestling. So <laughs> I think you're behind the times. Uh, <laughs> secondly, you bring up a very fair point. This is something we've gone through in the uh, different iterations of the show when we talk about what is what people want to listen to. So when we were talking about ROH, when we were talking about other companies, we'd lose retention. Yep. We can see in the numbers, and it's like, oh, you know, people weren't that interested or. That would be a later segment, and just we'd lose audience. Um, so if you guys do want to hear us talk about ROH and all that, uh, you know, other companies more, let us know. And, you know, you know we'll get somebody but, watching it, and we'll get to chatting about it. But I also think, too, just because we have, like, two or three callers and maybe ten tweets, that doesn't automatically warrant it. Now, it's not saying sure. your, your voices aren't being heard, but it goes back to what Scott said. If we're losing audience retention at that moment, we have to appeal to the mass. Yeah, as opposed to sure. Small. Well, I'm also I'm just going to be the honest one out of the trio here. The truth is, is we're just not watching it. I think uh, at least I speak for myself. Well, there's that too, but uh, you know, and, and, and if, you know, if, if if it is if people want us to watch it, and they, then we start throwing it in every so yeah. often, and people are like, "Oh, cool, I'd sure. like to hear more of that." Yeah. Sure. And also, I mean, we do cover their big events. Whenever they have some, we make sure we break down we their try. big events. We try to every time. Um, we're not talking about final battle today. 
didn't we talk about it last week or something like that? <laughs> the preview. I mean, that's about it. But uh, <laughs> so we but did. it happened. It happened. I mean, but nobody watched it. So <laughs> <laughs> nobody watched it. Johnny probably watched it while sleeping and while driving. You know, because Johnny's somewhere. Wait, 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 wait. While sleeping, while, while driving? driving? Yeah. yeah Have you been in a car with him? So in other words, Johnny's dead, according to Scott. Well, yeah, he found his girlfriend, an angel in heaven. <laughs> Next call. She goes to a different school. You guys wouldn't know her. <laughs> Hey compadres, it's at Dylan Matthews 91 on Twitter, all the way from Australia. Um, just a quick question about with the new year coming up. Um, who do you think in WWE will be turning a uh, face who is currently heel and who do you think will be turning heel who is currently face? I think um, that Finn Balor needs to turn heel um, with Good Brothers and obviously the Miz is going to uh, be turning face it looks like anyway happy holidays uh merry christmas and happy new year uh dylan thank you so much uh for getting us your message uh i know that you didn't want to call the hotline so i i gave you the email so that you could just simply record a message on your phone and i really appreciate you did that although just because the phone is very close to your mouth does not mean that you have to whisper into it. It was this most soothing message we've ever gotten. <laughs> it was the most Jesus AS- Christ, first he's yelling, now you're young. It was the guys, ASMR. Oh, you guys are out of control. It was the ASMR. <laughs> I do want to give you credit for being the most soothing voicemail we've ever got. Uh, yeah, Dylan, um, uh, yeah, we're obviously we're giving you shit here, but thank you so much for that. Um, and uh, before we answer the question, this is actually a pretty good point. Uh, people overseas are like, hey, I want to call the hotline, but I don't want to pay for that or whatever it is. Uh, apparently, you know, Mickey Bell just must be rich and spend all that yeah, sort of money. Yeah, he all the but, type of call uh, If you really do want to leave messages, you can always uh, just record into your phone. Use your voice recorder on your phone and then email that file to contact at dragonwagonradio.com. So uh, that's what Dylan did here. Uh, but of course, he decided to whisper into his phone. I'm assuming it sounded like he was in a closet hiding away somewhere. I was thinking he was sneaking. It sounded yeah. more like not whispering that he was sneaking. It's like, I'm not supposed to be on the phone. He, right I, now. I picture him on his bed late at night after his bomb told him to go to sleep. And he he's got in a, the he's cover over his head. He's in he a tent. Head. Yeah, with a See, flashlight. I think he's in the dungeon of Mickey Bell's castle. Oh, shit. Although he's, this guy's in Australia. And I know uh, it's they're a all dungeon. in the same place. That's a good point. It's down below. He's like, um, he's like oh, I'm stuck in Gibraltar. Down under. So, that. I'm so, stuck in Gibraltar. So he's talking turns. He's talking turns. Who do you think is. Uh, is turning from one way to the other this this upcoming year in WWE. I don't think they're gonna have. I don't think Finn Balor's turning at all. Yeah, and I also don't think. I think this Miz turn is also not happening the way that people think it's happening either. Oh, I think it. You I think, think it, it is? Yeah, I think it's a gradual one. Okay, you I mean, it's going. You what, put, you put him face? In face. He's going. So he's gradually going face. Yes, yeah, I'm because I think with, with it, the but... juxtaposition of Daniel Bryan being the heel. Yeah, that they didn't immediately join them together in any way. So right. it's like, all right, let's see if we can flip Miz sure. the other way slowly. That's fair. Well, um, them doing the goofball element with Miz is kind of... I know, love it. Oh, it's so good. I don't want to see... At this rate, don't touch Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose because you see it didn't work. We'll get into TLC in a minute. People are not buying it. So don't try... Meaning don't flip them. Don't try to all of a sudden right. make Dean yeah, no, Ambrose... Dean, Dean been flipped. Right, but don't try to flip them would. back. You know what no. I'm saying? Don't make oh. Dean... No, let's, but let's, let's make it less obvious. Let's think of those people that maybe are, are down the card somewhere. Um, uh, I could see maybe them attempting to uh, use... Um, Zelina to get Andrade to maybe be a good guy in the upcoming year. Hmm. Uh, I think he's better as a heel, especially with her. But I feel like maybe they're a little heel heavy on that department. So maybe he could become one of the new oh, baby faces. Face. Um, I could also see some of the uh, NXT people coming up being different from what they were in NXT. So you think like Nikki Cross? Uh, like Nikki Cross. Well, she's sort of a tweener anyway, but I'm thinking maybe like an EC3 debuts as a heel instead of a baby face. Good luck I think, with that. I think yeah. EC3 comes out of a straight baby face. Yeah, I mean, but... I don't know, you know, who who knows? Um Lars Sullivan has a face. Uh <laughs> I mean he's he sort of is. He was. Um yeah, that's, that's a tough question. I could see do. debuting Shayna Baszler as a face. Uh, I could see that as roster. well. Wait, really? Yeah. Especially with Ronda. Yeah, as, that as she's a, a yeah, that yeah. she's a badass, you know. Okay, if you're, people out. Well, when you bring up with the whole Ronda element, I'm just saying like if you bring Shayna up by herself and don't have Ronda Ronda associated right away. Yeah. I well, like, we like our tough gals right now. We like Becky Lynch, yeah. you know, for the Fair majority enough. of the crowd True. likes Fair. Ronda, Fair. like they like legit badass. I think I think you'd see more of this probably in the tag team division than actually in the singles division that sure. I can think of anyway. Well, I could see a problem. lot of tag teams flipping. And I was going to bring that up because you can when you have the New Day, the Usos in the bar for instance. Yeah. The bar is the like solid solid heel out of the trio. But they're not really because everybody still cheers them. Because everybody still yeah. cheers for them. The Usos, no matter what they do, they'll get cheered for. Mm-hmm. The yeah. New Day can't go heel. Oh, yes, they can. And if they did, it would be glorious. You think people accept this New Day 
what did, how they would I don't to go- care. That's what makes it great is if they wouldn't ex- like if New Day, don't get me wrong, I fucking love New Day yeah. and as long as they want to be hilarious and yeah. goofy on TV, sure, give it to me, but if they turned heel or specifically one of them or two of them turned on the other um, and I, you know, I don't know whatever f- f- iteration that would be. Mm-hmm. It would be one of those things that would just you wouldn't expect in such a way that I think it would be so much fun in the way that you know everybody's like John Cena's never turned heel, Roman Reigns would have never turned heel, all these sorts of things. You know what? Give us a fucking heel new day, and I think uh, you know it's fresh, it's unique, and what mm-hmm. else can they do at this point? Yeah, because you can't because you can't turn some more Joe face. You they're just not, can't. They're not. They're not. Yeah, you can. Can you? Yeah, sure. You can turn anybody into anything. You can it's try possible. to. You can try to. I no, think it's how it's, it's received. It's 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 also the consistency of what you the energy put into them. Okay. And course, how much fair, they fair, give a shit too. Fair. So I I think one that's uh been a long time coming is Sasha Banks. Banks for heel. Yeah, that's great. Banks yeah. turning heel. Uh yeah, actually you know what the women's division probably could utilize also the most switches. Because they, they tried with Becky, like it was going to be a heel turn, but the crowd loved and, it. Instead what they did was made their biggest face and now it's just sure. a series of faces. So well, I think what, wait, the Jay's over here talking into his phone telling Siri Oh, he's been, did you pick up a, a, a so, my daughter? You oh uh, wait, okay, so hang on. You immediately got okay, and can we can we interview her? I want to know what she thinks about <laughs> okay. what's going on. Hold on let me ask. She's like, Hold, uh, Hold on, what's let me your daughter's name? Who's gonna turn J- face or heel? Jalea. I'm gonna ask my daughter. Hold on, Jilly? Jalea. Jalea. Leah. Yes, Daddy. Okay, you're on. You're on the air with Daddy's podcast. Okay. Okay. So listen, I want to ask you a question. Okay, you ready? Um, can the new day be bad guys? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I like her. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Listen, Daddy's gonna call you back when he gets done. Okay. Okay. I love you. I love you. Bye. Bye. Press the button. That was the most over Jay's ever gotten on the show. By the way, <laughs> what a running! What a running! That out was to my that was Rock hanging out with Roman Reigns post Rumble right That's there. That was. Shout out to my five year old for her running. But and I, agreeing I, with me. I agree. What's your social media? Let her know. Let everybody know. <laughs> My daughter have more followers than me. Real follow quick. her on Twitch, everybody. I, I hate to break it to you, she probably already does. <laughs> but I do agree that there's certain people who can turn, who can't. So yeah, thank you for that call. Though, let's go to our next caller. Did you just thank your daughter? I thank my baby. Hey guys, it's Johan Pena from Florida. Just wanted to get your guys' thoughts. Now that the year is over, which pay per view of any company? has been your favorite of the entire year from top to bottom from first match to the main event let me know what you guys think scott johnny dale and jake and jay happy holidays to everyone happy new year's guys first of all happy holidays to you and your family johan thank you for all you do and all the support and love you've given compadres Throughout the year and the previous that's, year, that's very kind of you. Considering he, I feel like he almost forgot your name. I, I know because he was like, Jake. yeah, he said everybody, and he was <laughs> like, like, oh yeah, also Jay. He could just go Jay, Jay, and, and we didn't know which one. And, he, and <laughs> Jay, because there's too many Jess on the show. <laughs> uh, but top pay per view. I mean, it's it's going to be impossible for me to say anything other than the takeover that we just went to, uh, because I was there for it, and that's usually your favorite one because yeah. you lived through it. Um, I honestly think that the answer is definitely going to be up a, a takeover for me. Um, picking just one of them, I think, is near impossible, which is why I'm just going to go with War Games too because I was there and that match, man, is uh, I, I will never forget being there witnessing that match. Um, that's that's that would be my answer. War Games too for sure. Scott, I got three in mind. Two I was there for. One I was not. The Rumble this year was great. Okay, yeah. It was yeah, super fun, fun. First ever women's rumble. Yeah. And I had these expectations like, ah, I don't know, right. two hour long matches of a rumble. Yeah. Loved both of us. Great. Um, but I don't remember the rest of the card. WrestleMania, super fun experience, top to bottom. I know people who had watched it on TV and went like, that was bullshit. Like yeah. matches were no longer <laughs> in 50 minutes. Yeah. But it was a lot of fun. Sure. A lot of great moments. Um, but I think I have to go in the same realm as you, Jake. The most recent one, Survivor Series, yeah. top to bottom. Yeah. That was a fun card. Like, that was a fun, fun Survivor Series, and I got everything that I wanted. And that main event was my favorite main event of the year, Brock and, and uh, Brian. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, that, I definitely, for me, it's a tie between, shit, it's a, it's a takeover, not any particular one. It's in, it's in the take, a takeover because I can't think of which one. Survivor Series was dope, and I'm, I'm trying to remember, why did I like Backlash this year so much? 
it was something about backlash this year that I liked. It's hard to remember what, the, what those like other pay per views were yeah. sort of generic names. <laughs> hard to remember what the what the specific matches were mm-hmm. on any specific one of them. But so I missed the unique sets. Yes, absolutely. I like backlash used to have those the, giant swinging swinging. Oh, they were fucking. Uh, so so you almost good. got swung with the microphone Sorry, in your face. I'm very, very handsy when I speak, and I just smacked his microphone <laughs> no, stand. It, it's very true. Like I, I I hate that they did that. That they I, went generic. Yeah, they just like, hey, we're gonna use yeah, the regular. I set. mean, it's you that's know. why Mania helps so much because you're like, this is a crazy yeah. set. You already know it's gonna be something elaborate, but that's what made every pay per view feel different. Yeah, no, I completely agree, and also the fact that a lot of times there was a gimmick attached to whatever the thing was, which I, I sort of yes, like mm-hmm. they still do that, but it's like, oh, you know, now that they're backlash and fast lane and all these other things. Oh my God, Alexandra just came home. Hi, Alexandra. Um, uh. Yeah, I feel like it, they kind of get lost. They're all in the shuffle. But I also want to give honorary, honorary, honorary. Oh, final no, battle. I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick, stick with honorary. I'm going to stick with honorary. I'm going to give honorary mention um, to probably honorary Lorkin. The two most important pay per views of this year, and that is All In and Evolution, which are both great from almost Damn. from card to card. Yeah, I feel like I, I feel forgot. like. Evolution again. I think that the it was bookended with two bad matches, and the rest of the card was incredible. Which one you say, Evolution? Yeah, and but uh, uh, the only thing that ruined that a little bit for me was the fact that they kept reminding us of how important it was instead of just making it great. <laughs> um, and then of course, All In just because it happened. There was definitely some matches on that card that I wasn't as invested in. Mm. It was still a great wrestling card from top to bottom. It was cool. And it was, like you, you got into yeah. uh, the special club. Yes, and you got to see this like, yes. this thing happening. So. Yes, you're right. absolutely right. Honorary yeah. mention for sure. It for has that. to go to All In. They did something nobody thought they would do. So yeah. I think we got one more call. But again, nope, thank you. I think we got two more calls. Two so more? Let's, uh, let's keep going. Oh, but thank oh it's you. the holidays. We're taking thank, all the calls. Thank you, Johan. Again, let's go to our next caller. Hi, this is Scoop Staley in Champaign, Illinois. I'm just calling to uh, make statements about the previous Scott and Jake talk forever. Uh, the complaints against Matt Riddle and... Keith Lee, I find to be a bit uh, unfair, and I think it might be WWE's hiring policy right now. These are the top names on the indies. These are guys who are out there to steal the show every time, which probably makes them difficult to produce when you can't tell them to do what they do best, which is Keith Lee going nuts with suplexes and flips and Matt Riddle just straight up beating the crap out of a guy. So... Maybe it's the WWE's problem and not the wrestlers. I think they're ready. Just let them go. First off, uh, I wish we would have had your calls back to back, Scoop. Thank you for your second call. I double dipped. Double dipped. Do you want to know what this was? This was this was Johnny last week. um, Just steamrolling right past the fact that we had a couple hotline calls. This was a leftover one from last oh, week. Uh, I love holiday leftovers, though. Oh, so this it's is a holiday so leftover from last Except week. Except when they double dip. Ugh. And, of course, he's talking about the greatest episode of Wrestling Compadres of all time. Uh, Scott and Jake talk forever. <laughs> or if you ask uh, Google to play the episode, they will just say, Scott and Jake talk forever. Clap, 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 <laughs> clap, clap. <laughs> so as Scott and I found out last week. Um yeah, I was pretty critical of uh, both Matt Riddle and Keith Lee. I was critical of one and accepting of the other. Yeah, they just, they just... So which one are you accepting of? I am accepting of Matt Riddle. They just both bore me. Now, this is interesting because Keith Lee was brought in with just as much hype, quote unquote. Why, why the acceptance of Riddle and not of the other? Well, because I've only seen a, you know one match of Keith Lee. And I've only seen a couple of matches of uh, Matt Riddle. Mm-hmm. Matt Riddle is very comfortable... Not in his shoes, obviously, but in his body. Like, he presents and sells himself well. He he looks like he's been doing it for 10 years. Right. As his character. You know, the in-ring stuff is going to be different because all he's having is these, you know, short matches. Yeah. But Keith Lee, the match with him and Lars Sullivan, just didn't feel natural anyway. It didn't feel like... It felt like someone was putting on a show, which is the trend I'm seeing more and more because there's a lot of these people that just aren't ready, but this is the... The surge that you're talking about mm-hmm. of all this wrestling and all these performers, all these people, and we're going to get people that haven't been doing it yeah. so, for 10 years. And you see them and you go, whoa, this well, is rough. And, and I, th- I think, I'm sorry, Jake, real quick. I just think when it comes to Keith Lee, he's been doing it. I think just his style is different than what they're trying to get him to acclimate with a TV production style. See, and I feel like that's a that's an excuse. I, like You reiterated my point in your criticism of my original point, which is like, oh, these guys are, it's not their fault. 
uh, it's just hard to produce them. So then it's well, their fault. Well, like if yeah, maybe I don't like what WWE is doing with them, but that's still that's what I'm saying. I don't they're boring me. So on top of that, yeah. ECW, the yeah. back of the day, Paul Heyman was the master of showcasing what you're great at right. and hiding what you suck at. Right. That is not the case for how many of these companies work now, including NXT. Sure. They're going to go, no, you're going to be 100% at everything. We're going to make you that. Right. We're putting you through this doctorate program. You're going to be the best at everything. And I feel like the last person that, because it's changed recently, I feel the last person that was that way where they really protected them was Braun Strowman. Because for a long time, we didn't yes. see Braun wrestle in these bigger matches. And Braun was being hidden and kept as this mighty force. Right. And then he caught up and was ready. But right. you go look at old ECW when then those guys went to other companies and there's like, oh, they, they're not yeah. really good at that. Sand, yeah. Sand good at that. yeah, some of them. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, why? Why go against that? I it's great that you want to teach them everything, but teach them off screen. Sure. Don't I, make them do things that they're not good at. That's fair. And I, this is all, you know, hearsay, because mm. for all we know, they have free reign. You know, I guess all my point was in that episode a couple weeks ago was just I personally haven't cared about them. So for whatever reason, they're neither of them are connecting with me in any okay. capacity on screen or even in matches. I And contrary to you, Scott, uh, not to retread too much, but. Uh, that match against Sullivan was the, actually the first time I liked Keith Lee. That was the first time I was like, oh, okay, he's not that bad. I still just don't care about his character or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. I don't care about him as a person. He doesn't seem to interest me. I don't want to know more about him. Like, there's just nothing there. And Great. he's, now he's not, never going to listen to you talking to Jake over. Him. He's not doing enough in the ring to make me okay with not wanting to know more about him, if that makes sense. Like, some guys you go, I don't care anything about this guy because he does lots of flips, a.k.e early Evan Bourne or AKE. Or AKE. AKE? Why did I say that? Yeah, I was I like, know. I, I was Are wondering. You what AKE? This... Aki? The best uh, <laughs> Nintendo 64 games ever made? You know what I, Oh, I realized what I, I combined it IE and AKA. Oh, oh that's boy. Okay. My brain. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Well, for me, I think the thing is a TV production is one thing. Live events are another. For, that's, let me put that sure. out there first and foremost. Keith Lee could be amazing. He could be amazing events. at live events. And I don't think he's had that. I think the thing is the WWE signed an amazing wrestler, which he is, but they didn't sign an amazing TV wrestler. Probably. If you know, cause a lot of, there are some it's indie two different, two different art forms, two different yeah, art forms. Cause there are a sure. lot of indie wrestlers that with certain companies. Now they're basically low level training people to work for TV. Yeah, Kenta when, you know, when Tadeo Tommy came over, like that dude had so much hype because he was great, but man, he, I mean, obviously prone to injury as well, but like his matches were fine. I think to a degree, yeah, like AJ really Styles really had that as well, where it's yeah. where it was like yeah. this 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 huge story production. In the early early days of AJ Styles, like he can't do this. Mm -hmm. He so can all wrestle early a great match. Days. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And that was the consensus that people thought, like, oh, he can't do WWE, right? And he grew and he got better and he clearly can. Yeah, that, that's the thing. It takes TV production. A lot of people who get into wrestling, and we we talk about this a lot. They think once you get in the business, you can just be good and go to WWE and then you become the superstar. That's not the case. You're going into a full on production. You go from being just a great wrestler to a sports entertainer. Mm -hmm. And by that being a sports entertainer, you're a part of a television show mm -hmm. that happens weekly. You have to learn how to. It's like being an actor in a sitcom or being in a film. You have to know where your cameras are. You have to know what to look at, what to sell to. The mind boggling thing that they have to do more so now than ever is this dichotomy of playing to 80,000 people Who at WrestleMania in the crowd that mm -hmm. are there to the millions watching at home via the camera. Yes, yes. They have to do both and not lose you. That's impossible. Well, it's not impossible. It, it, we see it being done. It's for the average person who has not trained for that. Yeah, I mean, it's just when you think about it, it's this impossible feat. It's it's absurd. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but thank you definitely for that call. Is that all our calls that we have? Yeah. Thank what? you to thank you to all of our callers. I'll say this live for the last time this year. Thank you to everyone who's called in since the inception of the Compadres Hotline. You've added an extra element into the show. We appreciate you all. Make sure you get your calls in through the holidays. Seven four seven six 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 five six zero six seven four seven six 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 five six zero six. And if you are out of the country and you do not want to worry about high international phone bills, email contact at dragonwagonradio.com. 
Make yeah. sure you e- record it. Make it a great call. Use your cell phone. Send it to contact at dragonwagonradio.com, and, and we will get I it thought, on the make, show. Make, make the subject compadres hotline so that I don't have to sift through stuff. I thought Santa Claus was going to call. Santa Claus didn't call? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, maybe, 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 we got a, maybe we got one here. Hang on a second. S- Santa Claus? Beep. Ho, ho, ho. It's me, Santa Claus. I just wanted to call and wish a Scott and Arva a very Merry Christmas. He's been a very good boy this year. You break in my house again, motherfucker. I'm going to get you. <laughs> okay, this is a voicemail, so I can't hear what you're saying. Bye. Beep. What the fuck? It's called comedy, Jay. Catch up. I Let's get into the week in wrestling. I didn't know though. he was just that aggressive to Santa Claus. Yeah, of course right, he is. Let's recap the it's last. Steal my damn cookies. The last pay per view of the year. Last WWE pay per view of the year. TLC went down this weekend. We're gonna uh, give you a quick. Go ahead. Yeah, let's just chat. Let's just chat. Put the, right. put that put it down. Put it okay. down, Jay. Put it down, Jay. Put it, put it let's down. just let's that's go through. That's his daughter this. for crying out loud. <laughs> no, that's his burner phone. He's got two oh, different right. ones. No, my burner phone is in yeah, my Yeah, that's pocket. right. He's uh, aiming this thing. Yeah. Um so overall thoughts. Like uh, just like the pay-per-view, didn't like the pay-per-view. I liked it. Yeah. It was a fun pay-per-view. It's yeah. a fun pay-per-view. Well, uh, Scott and I watched this one together and Oh, uh, that's so cute. Um we held hands the whole time, which is a long time to hold hands. He's very sweaty and I think he has hypohydrosis, so it was a little awkward. Um but if you're gonna have hydrosis, make it hyper. I, I actually, I think that it all in all, it was not one of the best pay per views of the year. I actually thought it was. I don't think I liked it as much as other people are claiming that it was good. People take one match and make it the best part, then they you know oh, amplify the whole. And it had a strong third act, that's for oh, sure. Yes, so indeed. that definitely yes, indeed. you left it on high note. Like that was great. The whole thing that and, I sat and through. that's what people will do. They'll go. Some people will go it's, because of the third act. It's what they'll go. Although, and I'd rather they, them do that. That's fine because it, instead of going like the oh. Just the one match at the end. Otherwise, this was right. the worst shit to sit Although, through. Although, I say it's weird that you say that because I thought the general consensus, at least among, among us, that, that IC title match was quite a letdown. Uh, yeah. And that was definitely in the third act, right before the main event, after the world heavyweight title, which is weird. Um, but man, that match just felt to me, I don't know what it was. Those guys are great. That's a dream match on paper, but it felt like a couple of stories being told at once, and, it was, and they was, and none it, of them resolved or well, finished. We've had this match before. It's kind of boring in a TLC like six years ago. Sure, we, we had this match before a TLC, but that doesn't mean anything. No, no, I mean, I, this, yeah. I'm just using these yeah. different elements again. Like we just talked about, you have to convey this story to millions of people watching through the camera, mm-hmm. and clearly the the twenty thousand people in the arena. We're just like I don't care about this story. Did they were they chanting boring during yes, one they of were. it? Is that what because remember we couldn't make yeah. out what they were chanting because it wasn't a typical boring. Right, it was like this boring. is boring or well yeah, because it was it very was, it was an unusual chant. It's a ladder match and you don't you're not supposed to go it's into a ladder, ladder match. It's not a ladder match. It was a one on one regular. Oh, it was a one on one okay. match. Yeah. I'm sorry. Did I you watch? Was, I'm, no, I didn't watch that one. Oh. I didn't. I didn't watch that one. I'm, <laughs> I, I, heard, I saw that. No, I saw the highlights of that. I didn't watch that one. Um, because the people I know one of the biggest complaints were the lockups and the things they went for in this match instead of being a straight on brawl just to start out that uh, like I'm saying that yeah. there was multiple stories being told here for yeah a, the blood feud that right, they yeah. hate each other so much and they're doing moves yeah of all the they're doing lockups and moves and transitions it's like it got to a point later where Dean's doing these awesome leaping punches yeah yeah like something that was unique for him different move and I was like yeah where was this he was showing signs of Moxley we, this was all out of order it's like they got note cards to do the match, right. and they were all mismarked with what numbers they were supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, is what the match felt like, really. Yeah. It definitely felt like it was a just odd-paced match, which is a bummer, because I thought that was you know what I was looking forward to the most. Also, in that third act, I also thought the WWE title match was sort of a dud for me, personally, which is weird. You were gone for the first portion of it. I did. I was you're not. Making, you're making Dookie. I was making a Dookie for a little bit of that first world title uh, for that first world title match, yeah, you know, multiple world titles. Uh, for that, they've for turned that you match. a lot of this. But I don't know. Even if it, I feel like, I feel like general consensus of the room was like, oh, this is a, this is a, this is a good match, but it wasn't exceptional. It wasn't what you wanted yeah. it to be. That it's, that five star match. It's also difficult when you have a show filled with gimmick matches. Yes, that was, a, and was they're a one on one match. Yeah. So when you have to go, all right, this one's higher stakes, but nothing crazy is yeah. going to happen in it. So, and you're probably also assuming. The one guy's not going to lose the title. So get excited. Yeah. That's I, difficult. Right. Which, which match caught you off guard and was like, this is good? Uh, I wasn't off guard. I think we were all expecting it. But that Mysterio Orton match, the chairs match. Yeah, that was I, rad. I mean, I, we were, I was, it was one of my matches in the night contenders. And it was a match tonight to me, but it definitely did not disappoint. 
race boogie boarding the chair out of the ring was super fun and i feel so like cool. those ch- the chair shots like they hit each other so hard with those chairs and you know that they're they're close they love each other very That's much how you know because mm-hmm. how hard they, they hit each beat. other and also I, I know that this gets talked about a lot on the show so not to retread the same fucking talking points over and over again but i think when orton likes the people he's wrestling he's a hundred times better yep mm-hmm. and he loves wrestling ray because he shows man he was taking bumps like we don't see Orton take bumps. He was mm-hmm. taking chair shots like you assume. I mean, for a guy who I've always said uh, uh, takes the 619 like a bitch. Yeah, you heard me, Orton. Don't <laughs> don't don't find me. But just know that I said you take the 619 like a bitch um, for a guy who takes that so weirdly to me. He was just letting Ray lay into him like to the head with barely a hand, like barely mm-hmm. protected mm-hmm. shots, which I didn't think they could even do anymore. Um, it was just vicious and mean. and It was more of that Orton character. That I love like let Orton be a sadistic human being. I kind of was hoping more for mask stuff, but I guess, you know, they did it in a couple nights prior, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Sure. But uh, that, that to me was like a match that stood out for sure. Scott? Yeah, same. Uh, yeah, I expected going in, that would be my match of the night, and it was, and it was everything that I wanted. Um, yeah, they they let loose, and they they are the two types of guys also that seem like they watched the show. Yes. And they talked to everybody, like, what are you doing tonight? Okay. And then they talked to each other and go, we're not doing any of that. Yeah. And there is a that tends to happen a lot these days when you see something Mm -hmm. at the beginning of the night and then you go, oh, there it is again. And there it is again. So let's take this out of our mind. There it is again. And I I know there's so much going on. I know they got interviews. I know they got to do all the media, everything stuff at every show. And it's just a bummer when you see it like you want to feel like each fight is unique. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those guys really did a great job of that. And they had the benefit of having a gimmick involved, which was fantastic. Yeah. Speaking of gimmicks, uh, I think the match was a fucking train wreck, but we got to talk about that Liv Morgan bump. Oh, my God. The mm-hmm. one where we everybody had to run over and be like, yo, are you still alive? That was the <laughs> one of the best looking from the apron like table spots I've yeah. ever seen because mm-hmm. it's always tough. It's like, oh, I'm going to fall through the apron, but I'm not going to fall at my feet to the ground like a human being would. Right. I'm going to lay down and look, there's a table. So it's always like a weird like you have to suspend a ton of disbelief whenever that spot mm-hmm. happens. But she sold that thing like this is just what my tiny little ragball ragdoll body is going to do right now. And that table. Oh, my God. It's like very reminiscent of the uh, big show running around the ring trying to get at Danny Bryan and collides into AJ. Right. In the way that AJ just flew. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it was that. It's like, like, oh, does she have any control in this? Yeah, or there's anything? there's no. wrestling and then there's physics. <laughs> and yeah. sometimes physics wins. Yeah. But yeah. I'm going to tell you what was funny for me about that after that spot. You can see Sarah Morgan, Sarah, uh, Sarah Morgan, Lord Jesus, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah Logan, Logan yeah. excuse me, Sarah Logan, having the wheels turn in her head like, oh my God, I got to have my spot now. So I got to make it But count. you know, but her spot was terrible. <laughs> I know, that's what I'm saying. But she yeah. was looking like, I can't wait for mine. If this just happened with Liv, mine no. is going to be great. And then and it, it didn't wasn't. deliver the same. Like terrible. You go she up just, and you go here. And it was also, honestly, the way that even they got into that body slam. I remember that was like day one wrestling school. <laughs> the way that she posted, she over posted on uh, her, she on her had thigh. Made sure she had the she hand like, but everything was like a little bit too slow technically sound. and a little bit. No, not, not technically sound. Cause that's a good thing with something's technically sound, but it was it a little did, bit too slow. And like, I'll piggyback on what Jay's saying that uh, technically sound in that it's, uh, they're reminding you they're doing a move okay. rather than That's Natalia it. is like better at a definition. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm grabbing you and I'm throwing oh, yeah, you through this. Yeah. It was very like, like Natalia had moments throughout that match where she's got we, fire in her eyes and she's doing she's putting a hurt on people and then other times it's like hey you okay? Yeah. <laughs> we, we talked about it that night was that in my opinion that was the best she's ever looked for a still terrible match. That was especially because there were strikes I remember some of those those obviously the slaps were all pretty great because you're just slapping a bitch but until uh, she holds her head after I was like you okay yeah uh, we talked about how that match with Nikki Bell uh N- with Mickey Bell uh with Nikki Bella <laughs> get the fuck away from me yeah. don't touch me <laughs> I didn't know he was a leprechaun um there's that match with uh with Nikki Bella where the camera is like right up close and she like gets thrown by Nikki in some awful violent way and then you hear her go great job Nikki like in full <laughs> in full volume and that's just I think how Natalia is very but, Cena-esque yeah but she needs to tap into that because she's just I've said it on the show before she's just like a very 
she's so choreographed. She feels like she's not in a fight. She feels like she's running through the motions of a wrestler versus like being in a fight. So the best part of you got to give Ruby Riot a lot of credit for that, trying to hold her, yeah. hold her own and making it look like it, what it was mm-hmm. supposed to. Best part of the whole match was don't mess with my family, bitch, and the slap. Yeah, and mm-hmm. that was the best part, other than live. But um, and that table will now be at WrestleMania Access yeah, this year <laughs> because it hasn't been touched. It did not get no, touched. No, it'll be there. <laughs> um, the only other match that I think was a real standout, standout of the night, of course, was main event. Main event, and and I Elias love Elias the- and Lashley. Oh, I, I love the fact that the women main evented and they didn't remind us twenty times they main evented. Yes. So kudos to WWE. You know what this is for? You know what this was though. This was that test. Like, let's see how we put them in the main oh, event in the high profile match. God, they fucking brought it, and so. Because we'll use a uh, lower tier, we'll use a lower tier pay per view. No, you don't think it's a test for it. No, because this is what I didn't think of this scenario because I'm not that good. Uh, when I had said like, "Oh, this would be great if this main evented," but Ronda's there, so that'll sooner main event, right? And I didn't think, "Oh, well, why wouldn't Ronda get involved in this main event?" Right. I don't think anyone so thought about they that. They <laughs> still get their publicity, right? Exactly. Because she's she's still it's, main she's, eventing the show. She's still in the main event. So yes. that's that was everything. Mm-hmm. That's that's the most high profile thing there is. Ronda's involved, so I don't think it was necessarily a test. I think it was they know they can go, and Ronda's in the main event. Yeah, and that's a hundred percent fair. Um, Those are the clips that are going to show everywhere because she's that's pushing fair. very fair. Doing but that. let's give the women credit. They went out there and they tore the house down in a main event caliber match, regardless of whether they yeah were there for the right reasons and Ronda or not. Like oh, yeah, it was a, God. it was a solid main event. They they were. Beating the shit out of each other, those kendo stick shots that Oscar was delivering, necessary. Oh, <laughs> and I was saying like I, I almost feel worse for Charlotte because at least Becky's back has her gear on it, has the fabric and whatever mm-hmm. she's wearing. But man, her Charlotte just, is all her open, cracking Charlotte so <laughs> hard. And I was the only one who called Oscar winning that of our little uh, group, which I was very impressed with. Yeah, uh, sure. That's why you have a slot for two winners on there. You called it. With Wait, one or two Listen, shots. Listen, you know the way the game works. You get three points for picking the winner, and then you get a backup choice where you only get one point for. Mm-hmm. So it's still not as valuable because obviously at that point it's a 50 50. Listen, systems I rigged. I don't have to everybody. explain gaming systems, systems rigged. to you. Um, everybody could have guessed the same shit. But I love that Oscar's the champ. Um, I, I think this is a great ending. I think this was a fun way to do it. I do wish she's the champ for the first time. I do wish that. I feel like that that's was, that's underplayed. I will admit because I I gave it to Becky. I definitely gave it to no, Becky. I knew she was losing it. I didn't think I didn't think they was gonna do Oscar though. I honestly did. I, I think that it's the best story. I was gonna say I uh, before I was so rudely interrupted because um, I don't interrupt anybody ever. Uh, <laughs> I <laughs> you both I do apologize wish that, for it and then you keep doing it. I wish that Rhonda had pushed them off of a ladder through a table or in a more violent way because. By the time Oscar got up there, they were f- like they had time to. They were fine. Yeah. I wish that that no, spot was the bigger. Shock, <laughs> right? They're, or I'm even like, if who you what you already wrestled? But no. Even if somebody got hung up on the rope or there was something else there, but I, I was good. I'm it. nitpicking. It was yeah, a fucking are. great match. You're always nitpicking, and I'm I I'm very glad that every one of Charlotte's ribs aren't broken. <laughs> From uh, Becky coming off that it could ladder. be like shark teeth; they just, just grow in new. They fall fuck. out and they grow in new. She just sat on her. There was not, it was not a leg drop. It wasn't a splash. Oh my she god! She just sat on her off Ooh. of the off of the friggin' ladder. Yes. Ooh. Uh, yeah. It was, so it was overall, awesome. if you had to grade it, what would you give it? The whole entire pay per view. Yeah, it was a seven out of ten. I said a grade. Six out of ten. All right, there you go. B. Uh, that's a C or a B, a B minus. Okay, thank you. B. I give a solid B. Solid B. Let's go. What would you give the YouTube highlights there, Jay? I would give the YouTube highlights to probably a, the comments were getting a D. By the way. Uh, <laughs> anyways. But it was just the highlights of the, the Sev Dean match. Let's go on to Monday Night Raw. We kicked it off so then, with all the McMahons in the ring and Triple H trying to make sure no, people thought we he did, wasn't. We didn't start with all the McMahons in the ring. We started with one at a time for a 20-minute segment oh, well, introducing all, all of the McMahons. McMahons. For shake up, I, I had the well, there, I had the sentence. You didn't need to finish it for me. I there's a reason, this. gentlemen, that this happened is because we no longer have a general manager. No, it's because we listen to the people and we change with the times. Oh, right. if you watched all the YouTube highlights, Jay, you would have known that Baron Corbin. I know lost Baron Corbin got his ass. I watched that match happen. Well, there was no more general manager as of that show, and I was when we were watching DLC. I'm like. Shouldn't people just be running amok on Raw right now? Like, shouldn't people just be like fucking running in and hitting people? It's like, what's gonna happen? There's no, there's no general manager. He's dragging a ref down you know, the aisle with. Him. I don't know everybody's been shitting on this McMahon thing on this week already. I, I honestly, I love it. Good. I'm glad that you're acknowledging that. You know, I mean, he said the words. 
we've you know we've been messing up or what we I wrote it here. He said we haven't done a good job. And then Triple H says, you know, expect something new, something fresh, new faces, new superstars, new matchups. Yeah, obviously people are like, oh, great. You're saying new stuff is coming. It's still a bunch of McMahon's running thing. Yeah, it's fucking WWE. The McMahon's run that. No matter like, what. what. What are you nitpicking about <laughs> yeah. reality for? Um, as long as these promises come to fruition and we do see some new shit. And we did. This week on TV, we the got... The Revival are number one contenders. And not just mention that. We got, you know... <laughs> yeah, a, that's a, short-lived. We got, a, you know, new contenders for titles. We got people yes. showing up there. I mean, it was a fun week. And even if it's all bullshit, and even if it's bro- empty promises, I don't care. I had a good time. I love seeing Vince on TV for every yeah. chance he's got left. I was going to say... Uh, the see, man's eyeballs seem to be seeking back his- out of his head. But other than that, I'm, I'm and happy. And any moment he has with any superstar is always the best thing, because yeah. there was Heath Slater coming oh. down in the oh, he referee the shirt. shirt. Like, oh. And then, yeah, they had a little handshake. It's like, that's great. It was great. I want to see the the most longest reigning yes. character in WWE yeah. at this point right. interacting with anybody. Yeah. I like Triple H sitting there trying to show everybody that uh, I'm hurt, but I'm not hurt. Right. With the stiff arm. With that stiff arm. Because when Shane gave a hug, that left arm didn't move. That, 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 don't, 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 don't touch right here. Don't, don't. I also don't want, I also want to talk about this because everybody has been shitting on, you know, Baron Corbin in kayfabe world. Yeah. Like Baron Wait, Corbin. Wait. No, no, like in kayfabe, meaning oh, like, oh, yeah, yeah, meaning yeah, like, I know oh, what you mean, yeah. you're the reason why this has gone bad. But let's just talk about this. Doesn't make sense. He has how, gotten over. How great for Baron Corbin to share an entire segment with the four most powerful people. And barely able to get a fucking word out. But, you know, I don't know. But he, here's the thing is that he... He acted great. I loved yep. the interaction with the audience. I loved That's him, what I'm about. Yeah. him telling people, no, 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 guys, calm down. Everybody calm down. He's going to finish this sentence. It's going to be good. He was hilarious. Scotch just spilt tea all over his booty shirt. Not all. And uh, um, honestly, I was super stoked for Baron, and I think that this is only good for him. Oh, and yeah. I don't understand why we needed to retread the entire segment from TLC all over again. That was weird to have. That was unfortunate. All of it. was it. the same exact segment over again. Yeah. yeah. But whatever. Nothing new. At least Baron is a character who now I has a I guess it was grind. for Jay, because maybe it wasn't in the YouTube highlights. I just saw the highlights of that. I watched every other match. Jay didn't. Jay, every other match. Jay thought so. that the highlights from Raw were from TLC. I he he the, was combining the I two. I the both of you guys. Uh, uh, he was like, wait a minute. I thought Heath, why is Heath coming out again? <laughs> um, but uh, honestly, that match was still fun, even though it was a retread. I still enjoyed it. It was, yeah. you know, I, I think I think the, the moment that was different, that was super fun, was when everybody goes nuts, and then... It, it well, it's the uh, it's a no DQ announcement, and Heath is in there kicking Baron. Uh, that was and, and that got got over huge. The yeah. entire crowd popped big for that, and I was like, great. And that's what I love, like the focus. And this doesn't have anything to do with the announcement of like we're going to change things up. I just like it when they are able to focus and have something for everybody. Mm. Like the this is a time now where the, all these guys have a little role. Like right. Heath being in this role right now for a referee of whatever it is for a while. And being like, hey, you know what? I'm going to stand up for myself right now because the odds are in my favor. Of course. Like, that's a great moment. Like, those little things like that. Yeah. When I know people were talking about, like, oh, I'm skipping Corbin. He's boring. Like, you're missing the you're missing other the story. Yeah. Yeah. You're missing the, and, the full story. And what's nice is that for as much shit as Raw has gotten and people saying the, it sucks and the ratings are terrible, they are telling a, um, a show wide story, which yeah. is that's just what they're doing. And it happens every now and then. Every now and then, Raw as an entire show is one story. It's the it's authority. It's a continuous story. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? I like that it comes and goes. Like, I want it because, you know what? Good. If I, SmackDown is doing something different, mm-hmm. Raw can be different. So I don't like, uh, I don't uh, mind it. It's not beholden to a formula. Exactly. Can we also talk about how stiff Kurt Angle still looks? Jesus Christ. Yeah, that dude. It, it makes me so uncomfortable. It makes it so, especially when he was God, giving he, basic punches in the corner to Barrett Corbin. I was Ronda like, talking, oh. Kurt Angle walking. Like, yeah. those are the two most uncomfortable things. Like, Jake, dude, dude looks like he's walking around standing on a squatty potty at all times. Oh. Um, and I want him to be okay. I want him to be all right. But I, I also don't want this to be like, this he's man. thinking he's got to wrestle. Like, this is the only thing that right. we want of him. Yeah, you don't need If you to. don't feel good, man, just don't. Because he's right. just so stiff. But Jake, you brought up a good point. We do have new contenders because now Tyler Breeze. Breeze answers the the open, you know, challenge. open challenge for IC title, puts on a, a fun match. Obviously, not like a NXT caliber match, um, but still a fun match. I just love the fact that Tyler Breeze got an Intercontinental title match, uh, got an uh, an entrance that yeah. I saw. The, it didn't just come back from commercial; he was in the ring already. Well, we were watching you know? main event next week or last <laughs> so, week. That's true. 
Especially um, that. <laughs> you know, that was super fun. Kudos to Tyler Breeze. The kudos. Guy kudos. kudos to you, <laughs> my grother. Hey man, AKE, AKE. Kudos. AKE that's Kudos. My, that's my new nickname in 2019. Kudos. kudos. We got the package that did talk about. We talked because we brought up earlier the soon to be arrivals to the main roster, Lars yeah. Sullivan. So yeah, the so they, AKA Scott doesn't have to watch NXT anymore because they're all coming. Did you watch did you actually watch this segment where they were like, these are people coming? No, or are you just see. reading what's on no, there? No, I was all on right. my way I was on my way to a show. <laughs> gotcha. So uh, what they did was they decided to just do vignettes. They're like, so you heard Triple H say that all these new faces are coming. Let's take a look at some of those people. And then they just ran a block of you know, yes. five Four minutes. Five. Yeah of no I think it was five or six different vignettes for people coming up and or coming back. Uh, and eight, that, like eight people. That list, uh, yeah, Lars Sullivan, Lace, who we already knew about, Lacey yep. Evans, Heavy Machinery, Nikki Cross, EC3, Sami Zayn, and I, I made a note because I thought it was interesting that they they used all of his heel footage, mm-hmm. which I think is just, you know, he's not going to come back as a baby face. Right. And then Kevin Owens uh, as well. Um, I think that this is a misstep. I like that they're like, guys, new faces are coming. Don't tell us right now because now you've immediately killed the big pop when EC3 just randomly yeah, shows up. The only one we were cool we were waiting on was Lars. Yeah, Lars was the one we were waiting on. But but see, this is the this is the counter argument is all of this now on social media is always telling people to let them and get them in on the excitement of like, hey, they're going to show up. Okay, but you you once you just like Jake just said, you say it that they're coming. You never know who. That's the beautiful thing about NXT because you never know who's getting called up. That doesn't work anymore. We live in a different time now. It's it, that's the rumble. I, also, I, I that's surprised. not that. Sure. The rumble is the surprise. Sure. Although, the adding people to the roster is hey, you need to know this word needs to spread so that way you start watching Raw. Set it to your DVR. Well, you know, subscribe on their YouTube page, Jay, so that way you can see the highlights. Um, like, I, that's I, that's all the stuff that's announcing matches like that is they want to always right, be trending. Right, I follow. I, I will say this to counter my own argument uh, oh God, of this being a, of this being a misstep. Maybe they're just saying like, hey, guys, one day they're going to be here. And so we shouldn't expect it soon. So it will still come as a surprise. <laughs> it is sort the- of like Shelton Benjamin returns. You know, like remember when that was six oh, months in the making? Oh, like, so I kind of hope, <laughs> hope that that's what happens. I hope that like they're just saying, hey, guys, yeah, changes on the way because there's all these people coming and coming back. But it doesn't mean you're going to see them next week. Like, I'm hoping that it's at least that. Sanity. And that they don't just start doing this. Well, Sanity's fucking... No, 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 no. I'm just saying, remember how they were selling the packages after the draft? Sure. Sanity is coming. When? But Uh, Sanity's coming. I I, I like all these call-ups. I'm fine with all these people leaving NXT. Uh, But that's what NXT is meant for, as we always have said. And I love Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, you know, coming back as heels and picking up where they left off, even though Mm -hmm. they're probably going to get a huge pop regardless. Um, but, so we feel like we have the WWE listening to the compadres because they had a number one contenders gauntlet match. Me, yeah. the They're listening, listening to, to the compadres. They're listening to Scott and Arver. Me. I'm, I'm sorry. Scott and Jake's show. I'm sorry. Well, no, just Scott. Just Scott. Just Scott. I'm the one who's yeah. always talking about gauntlets. So I, 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 during the week that you couldn't make it, uh, Jake and Talk, uh, Jake and Talk, Ooh. really good. The tea is hitting me. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> Scott, and Jake, tea. Scott and Jake Talk Forever episode. Okay. Um, uh, we talked about how I hated how Asuka got into the TLC match. I couldn't stand that it was another like fucking battle royal and it's the same shitty gimmick that's like, let's get all these women in here as much as possible. Yeah. And it's it's never exciting because there's never a pinfall. There's never like a possibility for two women to really face off because it's over the top rope. And Scott was like, yeah, how about a gauntlet match? Cut to two weeks later. Exactly. Literally exactly that. A gauntlet match for the number one contendership. Gauntlets establish a contender in that you see them become a fighter. You see them scrap. You see them take whatever they can to make it happen. Battle Royals and Royal Rumbles oftentimes create opportunists. Yes, mm-hmm. it's more of like luck. Yeah, it's it's they they you know by the skin of their teeth something happened and they they just happened to miss a bunch of monsters right. or whatever and it, it managed to be a right. But when you go through that gauntlet, you see someone clawing and biting right. and making through it, which this gauntlet match did. And it was like, and the, initially in the beginning, I'm like. All right, I see where this is going, and I, and it's all going to happen the way that did, I kind of saw it. Did you it, think Bailey was going to go all the way or something? No, but I I thought it was going to be more obvious than what it was. Right. Uh, I thought yeah. it was going to be you know like a, basically like Sasha. Right. Yeah, yeah. I didn't expect Natalia who ended up winning this. I didn't expect that at all. I can't remember ever raw going off of the air with Natalia's music playing and her standing on the ramp <laughs> and them saying like next week Ronda versus Natalia. I I was like what. 
Uh, and it's great. And yeah. from TLC, where it's like, yeah, you had some hits and misses. Yeah. She was all hits. She was good. She that, was all hits. It was, it was great. And it just, for an audience to watch someone that long, it really it, helped establish her. And now we're getting, we're getting the payoff of their program, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, which, and there, yeah, to that phone call, <laughs> Natalia needs a turn. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and that's coming. I kept expecting. I kept waiting yeah. for the thing if she's so going to hit her. Does she turn with the cat ears or without the cat ears is a question. Oh, I like it when she's a crazy cat lady. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's so funny. Um, but it, it was a highlight. It was definitely a highlight. And I, I, you know, that took up all of my raw on the on Hulu's edited version. Oh, I didn't yeah. See, really? I didn't see any. Like, you there saw McMahon's the only, and ladies. Yeah. The only <laughs> things that happened, I think, were the, the Corbin match. The Intercontinental title match and then the gauntlet Gaunt. match. And the gauntlet match was all of it. So I'm pretty sure there's a ton of shit I missed. Actually, I know I missed. Uh, um, like I said, Revival Tag, yeah, one tag yeah. match. I missed some other stuff. Uh, so I'll have to go on YouTube to check Jeez. that out. But uh, you know what? Good. They can uh, show you where you can get that. Yeah. Thank sure, you, I'm sure he could just, you know, let's go to loan, loan me one of his 19 cell phones that he has for some reason. <laughs> let's go to uh, SmackDown Live. First of all, I uh, have we're to going to SmackDown this. Live. Is one of the people you know? You, is your referee friend finally getting us to hook up? No. <laughs> He's Slater. He's Slater? You know he's Slater? He got kids. I got kids. Uh, I have to say, personally, a big congratulations to my bro, who's now an official member of the SmackDown roster, Mustafa Ali. It's well-deserved. Oh, Adele. Oh, wait. You mean Adeo? Adele. Adele. Adele Rutledge. Adele Rutledge. His yeah. real name. Remember last week when you were like, I know his real name, guys. I think everybody does, because they say it all. It's a deal. Mm. Uh, man, congratulations. Dude, you're getting a deal <laughs> on SmackDown. I hate the both of you. <laughs> but no, they made Mustafa Ali a yeah. main part of the roster, which is a great thing. And he was a part of an amazing tag. Him and AJ Styles versus Andrade Cien Almas and the new Daniel Bryan. And he actually got the pin on the WWE champion. I got a question for you guys. Uh, is 205 just developmental still? Like, is this a call-up? Do you, would you consider this a call-up? Yes. Yes, I definitely do. Because now you're not limited. Because 205 Live gets those bathroom break spots on now on pay-per-view sometimes. Granted... Granted, Survivor Series was a different day. Oh. Murphy and Ali yeah. made sure that people take notice. Sure. Yeah, and I didn't go to the bathroom. I bought a T-shirt. He bought Let's a T-shirt. Because he literally, and yeah, Scott literally wouldn't have got it. But those were the show. That was the, the irony show. was that he was buying a 205 Live T-shirt. It was, <laughs> didn't make any sense. I love those guys so much. <laughs> uh, I think it is because now you're using the 205 Live guys for different things like so, managers. All right, so and, let me ask you a question then. Additional, part two. Should they just brand well, it? Should they just make it NXT Cruiserweight? No. I, let or me NXT's answer, 205 Live. Let me answer also. Sure. I would say this. It's there are certain people on the rosters that have to do double duty. They are guys that have to do double duty. Mustafa Ali right. now. No. Yeah. It sounds like he is done with two or five. Yeah. Okay. But there are other guys that I think what they're trying to do is incorporate characters into different shows. So Mark, that way you watch, which then makes multiple it shows. more, which, which then does still make it a main roster show Two hundred five live technically is a main roster show. It's just, not on regular television. Well, so it's sure. main event, but man. it's it's sure. weird yeah, in, in it the is. way it where yeah. that's what I'm getting at. It's it's in that level. It's in main event, superstars world, yeah. mix match, challenge world, yeah. versus being developmental. Which we didn't talk about, by the way, real quick. Uh, do we yeah. congratulate the mix match challenge winners? Yeah, it was fun. That was the very fabulous. True, and uh, I called uh, it. They're going. To, yeah, and they're going to Connecticut. So congratulations to both of them. <laughs> um, I also want to talk about something real quick before we get too far into SmackDown and all the changes. Uh, the rematch clause is dead in this new era. Did you guys catch that? No. Yes. Okay, so I watched the show. Who said yes and who said no? I said no. Um, your voices are so similar. Um, the in the <laughs> new world in the new regime of WWE, uh, the what was said on commentary was that the rematch, the automatic rematch is antiquated, and that is why uh, with with Ronda, I'm sorry, with Becky and Charlotte being out there and Oscar coming out, it's not like oh I get my title shot. Nope, that's why they're like, guess what? Who's Vince up next? Said, get over it, Naomi. Uh, yeah, Vince. Okay. Vince come out saying get over it, earn it again. <laughs> Uh, you know, whatever it was, but they said that from now on there is no automatic rematch, which is I th I think is great. I think it's great. Now we don't have to AOP worry about seeing it again. Didn't have it either. Yeah. Like the same thing where they were told, like, no, you right. that's a good thing. We don't have the bounce back and forth. So basically, when the bar loses the titles, you don't have to worry about seeing that match again. You don't have to worry because about seeing because the part of the problem is their consistent storytelling is uh, faltering because some of the times we get them, yes, some of the times we don't. Right? It's not. It's and not. We hear those tweets from right. the superstars. Like Naomi talked about it, where oh, right. she never got hers, and right. you know, uh, and along with that, there is no longer general managers. Yeah, yeah. Now, I hope Paige has some sort of role with that because she was great. Yeah, they specifically said that. They, yeah, they specifically her role said, will change. Yeah, but she will no longer be general manager. I wonder if she doesn't become maybe a, a just a backstage personality. Like she's an interviewer who is still Paige. Like she's still her character. Uh, I, I don't really don't know what else she could do. I don't think they're going to pull out a commentary. 
I don't think they're going to move her in that sort of like direction. Well, you have maybe make her a manager. What is Alexa Bliss's title fake, fake. as of uh, her, Raw? La- well, last last week's Raw, essentially, she was yeah. assistant to the general manager of the women's of, division. Yeah, she was she was the general manager of the women's division to Baron yeah. Corbin. But that power they didn't mention. They didn't kayfabe that right. story. But so must be lost. Quick question: Is she officially done? Alexa Bliss. Yeah. Oh shit! This is too harsh, McMahon's. How dare they? She she they fired somebody second no, generation via. Like, what do you mean officially? Like done? as far as because the reason she was out was with concussions and whatnot. Oh, she's not. No. Oh, she was just temporary. Okay. Wait, who? Because Alexa Bliss, that was the reason she was out of matches due to concussions, and they yeah. were putting her in this role. Yeah, she just injured, and yeah. so she'll be back soon. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. okay, that's what I mean. Yeah, I think my page. She, yeah, like, oh, someone's gonna break it to him. She'll win the rumber. Uh, <laughs> the rumber. Ooh. Oh man, the rumber. Um, such a bouncy ring. What the hell else happened on SmackDown that was worthwhile? Other than Naomi, other than the Vince, tag team Vince division got close. a little crazy. That was fun. Yeah, the fact that Sanity comes down, laying everybody out. We beat you to it. I, I, e- EY's voice. I don't think I fucking love that. It's dude. so good. His voice. It's like, creepy. Hey, it's down. I, we beat you to it. It's, uh, we, it's, it's a creepy carny voice. We beat you to it, Cesaro. Like, it's like a little like a carny. Yeah, it's it's just Wolf this, is the carny one. <laughs> well, he looks like Robert Englund. That guy. Uh, no, he looks like one of the pinheads from that movie, Freaks. One of us. Oh, yeah. One, one of us. us. Well, we're not far off Ubo in our gobble, Ubo gobble. movie co- uh, comparisons. I like. Uh, them beating the bar to beating someone yeah, down. Yeah, fun. And I like and it, their. It was almost like maybe there was insanity happening. That's not their name. I know it wasn't, but uh, they're sanity. Go with it. They're sanity. It's good right. to see the Good Brothers on TV. With you know, and actually, wrestle a decent match and wrestle a decent a, match, yeah. and not in a little quick one. They haven't been on TV since August. That's what they said. Uh-huh. Really? Yeah, that's what they said. They hadn't been on SmackDown Live since August. Why? Yeah, I can't. I feel like they were, but I guess not. Because the tag division had primarily just focused on the Usos, New Day, and the Bar. It just focused on those three teams. Nobody else in the tag division mattered until you started bringing in the dudes that the two dudes with uh Shane. Lucha House Party. No, no, the two dudes that's been wrestling Shane and Miz. Well, they were two different people each time, but yeah. they had similar names. They were the Vegas Boys Vegas when they were in Boy, Vegas, yeah. and the month before, a week before that, they were something else. But, but. Um, but it doesn't answer my question of why. Right. Oh, that's I what I'm saying. Know. They just they focus everything on those three teams, and Ta- they, maybe it, just time. I mean, why? That's it, it is a two hour show. Gr- it's it's crazy to me because you have just matches. You have contendership matches. You have survivors. You have all these things, and it's like they they show up every week. They're there. They're eating your food. You're paying for their travel. I mean, I'm sure and they then, were on Superstars and on pre-show, and I'm sure they were on like all the other things, just like everybody else's. Who does not seen them? It's weird to me. They, they, where's Fandango? He's hurt, he's, he's hurt. hurt. I meant Tyler Breeze. He, all these other things. He was things. on uh, Raw. And he's but on to he another, another show. Online. And he's, he's on, on another Raw show. S- that, this week. So with the Good Brothers this week. I'm talking about pre the McMahon shakeup. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm saying that your, your, your question of why was there is the dumbest question ever. Because why isn't anybody on it at any given time? Hey, man. Apollo Crews should be on of, every week. They have a ton of p- people and not everybody gets screen time. That's not true. I think they have like 14 people on the show. <laughs> I watch the show every week. There's like 14 people. That's it. 205 uh, Live this Things. Is gonna, this is going to be a I long I love this part. Episode again. I love whoever wrote this in our rundown. 205 Live Things. Things happen. No, that's that's there every week when. That's a placeholder when, we, when, we, we, yeah. when no one watches it. Yeah. Thing. I know. But wait, a, wait. We didn't, go, we didn't finish talking about important shit on Raw. Yeah. We have to talk about the absolute and utter importance Raw? of. I'm sorry, SmackDown, rather. Sweet. Of The Miz asking Vince McMahon it's for blessing. Shane's blessing for his son's hand in tag team partnership. partnership. And this is I, just, exactly... I was going to finish the word. I promise you didn't need to finish no, it for no, me. No. Jay is constantly trying to finish my sandwiches. So are you guys. Oh, man. <laughs> just get it with no avocado, would you please? Uh, this is what I love. This is <laughs> Mr. Like... McMahon and Miz involved in a segment together when Mr. McMahon just takes the one word, and that's how good he is. And I wish there could be other talent that is either, al- I think it's sooner, allowed to do this. Mm-hmm. But like he just takes the one word, blessing. And just that is the most important word to Mr. Man. Like, I don't give blessings. <laughs> you don't have my blessing. I'm never given a blessing. Like just the yeah. the, the the constant like yeah. no and him getting on his knock. Like the whole fucking knock thing was <laughs> what kind so of knock good. Was that? Uh, it, was a, it was a manly knock like uh it was an adolescent knock yeah. oh, okay <laughs> like that's it like that's and, that's fucking that's the best you don't have to do the phony backstage thing lingering on the camera too wrong no. everybody talking sideways like 
And oh I'm Tamina. God. Yeah. <laughs> no, you stole my joke and put it on there. How dare you? How dare you? Um, I, I think that put Shane McMahon, I'm sorry, uh, Vince McMahon back on TV with people who are very funny and people who are good at talking. And Anybody. It'll be entertaining. How long do we want Vince McMahon on TV? Because there, until he forever. dies? No, no, no. Because there is this thing fans will say after you haven't seen him in a while, of course, you love seeing Mr. McMahon. But then it gets to the point you're like, okay, can we not see Vince every week? How long is that? Yeah, that's, you're just talking about wrestling fans. Like, we want I'm just, I'm just saying change that, always. No, I I know what he's talking about, but I don't feel that way with Vince. Okay. Yeah. I feel that way with other people, for sure. I feel that way with but Shane. I never feel that now, way with you Vince. You get what I'm saying. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Vince is weird. <laughs> Vince will just get a, a bug up his ass to do something, and he so, doesn't. It's just like, yeah. there it is. Do there it know, is. All right. Do you know that feeling that you have when you watch a Brock Lesnar match where you go like, shit, anything could mm-hmm. happen here. Vince is the non in ring version of that in wrestling. Exactly. When he when he has a live microphone, you go like, wow, this dude could really just do anything. It's his. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody. He, everybody else has to answer to him when they they do dumb shit. Mm-hmm. Vince could just do dumb shit on his own. Yeah. And, and it goes, that's fine. I, lo- I love the way he waved by Naomi as she did her little slide. Mm-hmm. Like he was so happy. It was like, oh, he put his arms into it in this awkward white guy way. It was yeah. so great. Any time that he does any of that shit, like uh, uh, what was it a month or so ago when they did the dance break? Oh yes, and he was attempting to <laughs> to flop. All that stuff. It's so fun. Like yeah. he's having fun. Yeah. Because backstage he's probably not having fun. So I have fun on camera. Damn it, for sure. All right, let's go into NXT and NXT UK. I didn't get a chance. Did you You guys watch yeah, it? Yeah. Uh, I don't this- have to. They made an announcement that everybody I like is going away. <laughs> so they told me, so, just keep watching the main roster shows. I went, okay, you got it. As usual, we're running, we're running out of time here. So I'll I'll, I'll talk NXT real quick. Um, uh, and EC3 beat Bobby Fish, as everybody assumed he would, after calling him out the, the weekend after, or the week rather, after TakeOver. Uh, they all get jumped by Undisputed Era. And then Heavy Machinery comes to the rescue. So uh, one assumes that they are going to challenge for the NXT tag titles. Question is, is do they bother giving them to them if they're coming up to the main roster? Sure. Yeah, why not? It'll makes the, it, 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 it makes gives them, them a thing. Up, yeah, gives them say. better. Mm-hmm. But uh, you, if you didn't watch that match, man, there was an incredibly scary, scary spot in that match uh, where EC3 just Irish whips uh, Bobby Fish. And when Bobby Fish went off that top rope, it slipped over his head. Oh, and so he kind of hit it a little low. Maybe he was sweaty or greasy, or whatever it was. <laughs> so the top rope slipped over, his, and so his he's probably oily. He's a fish, man. Oh, that fish oil is very good for you, though. I bet you he's yeah, very healthy. Just his eat fish hair people. looks. It's probably why he grows that beard so well. Um, it was scary. Like it was. I, I know that I'm. I'm gonna use this as the reference, despite you probably enjoying the moment. Do you remember when Enzo got caught on the bottom rope sliding out of the ring? And it was that like face, <sighs> that to the face. Yeah, I know. Was that this year? Horrible people. Are we recur- Is that your favorite moment of the year? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, regardless- I'm not a horrible person because I've learned more about right. that moment. And it's beautiful. Regardless of that, uh, it's that way that sometimes a rope doesn't act the way it's supposed to act. Mm-hmm. And Bobby Fish just simply trying to run a rope got caught underneath it. And it was just all face oh. and jaw and and throat that Enzo type thing it was, was it I hate was, to bring him up but that's what were you paying attention oh my god Johnny what happened seriously Johnny LaCosto I'm, I'm sorry. Johnny LaCosto <laughs> you better tell me that your daughter's calling you again or else that you have no excuse we literally just had that entire conversation anyways scary <laughs> spot in the match uh, um, I hope that Bobby Fish is okay he finished the match seemed fine so hopefully he's alive work email I'm so sorry yeah no sometimes we treat this podcast as work so see my phone's on the floor a work email where I can't who emails work? I get all of my stuff through uh, LinkedIn. Uh, Jessamyn Duke. Dear and Mar- Togos, <laughs> I'll be there to make sandwiches soon. <laughs> uh, How dare you? Jessamyn Duke and Marina Shafir will debut next week against uh, EO and Dakota. Ooh, I still cool. think that Jessamyn Duke, I can't wait to see her wrestle. If she wrestles like she walks, I'm sure we're all in now, for a where treat. Where was she? Uh, what was her big claim to fame before this? They're, those are the four horsewomen. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. those are the other two women. Those are the names that never stick. And yes. I, like, I know them by face, but by name, it's yeah. like... Because they, they don't characters You yet. need to be like uh, like uh, Sunfire and, and Moonbeam or something. <laughs> like, this is too confusing. All right, Every, everyone's real names are just like, eh, yeah. no thanks. All right, Vince. Um, You're welcome. Uh, uh, Ricochet, guess what? Put <laughs> out an how open, you say his name? Well, Ricochet? Uh, put out a North American open challenge, and guess who answered it? Tyler Breeze. I'm glad they're doing this. Yes, this is great. He this came, is this thing now, huh? It is. Uh, it was an incredible homecoming for Tyler Breeze. NXT audience was all over this. 
he got such a huge pop, a huge reception. Breeze's gorgeous uh, chance happening through the entire match. Mm -hmm. It was so much fun. A great match. Uh, he lost his effort, obviously, because, uh, you know, loser. Rick Shays. But uh, it was still super fun, and I do hope that we get this more. I want to see former NXT guys coming back to NXT, even if it's just one-offs. And I want to see... Titus O'Neil. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, I thought I got you. I thought I summed you. You're like, oh, okay, well, not everybody. Wouldn't, you wouldn't think it would be hilarious to watch him trip all over NXT? <laughs> Just falling under rings and dropping kegs. That's a that's his whole fucking sure. brand. Um, what are you writing? Oh, he's writing. Jay's changing the fucking thing right now as I'm trying to reach it. Uh, work, um, work stuff. Uh, in the UK side of thing, Isla Dawn is going to challenge Rhea Ripley. By the time you guys hear this, it'll have already happened. I'm sure Rhea Ripley will retain. Uh, the UK tag titles were revealed, and they are fucking gorgeous. Okay, but so which is the best UK title? Because that heavyweight it's, title... It's, it's, the, it's the main title, yeah. The, okay. the UK championship is still the best, but here's the thing. Is the women's title is the exact same thing, just on a white strap. Right, right, right. And uh, I just didn't know uh, right. the amongst the tags if they were... So they took... Or if you had a preference, maybe, you know, you might like the women's... Yeah, uh, you might have a preference. ...one and, with the no. strap. That yeah, no, that, that the one that that Robert Dunn... Robert Dunn? Robert Downey Jr.? Robert Downey Jr.? <laughs> it's a friend of mine. Uh, the one oh, that Pete Dunn. friends with Robert Downey Jr. Oh, word. Yeah, are you? Jay and I oh. go back. Yeah, just like Jay. He's on my He's on my phone. I know his real yeah, name. Yeah, you hang out with a um, Dale. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's me, RDJ, and a Dale are all, we all hang out with Man, David. I'm going to get my famous friends on with the line David here. Otunga. Johnny LaQuasto. <laughs> um, uh, Skeeter Skyflyer. He's a, he don't call me back. I can't remember what the fuck I was talking about now. Oh, the, uh, tag the belts. The belts. I love it because they are running with the same theme. They have the same griffin and lion on mm -hmm. the sides, just like the main title and the women's title. And Harry Potter. And then they have Harry Potter. <laughs> um, they have uh, uh, the whole Grammy is there. Uh, Hermione Granger is there. Hermione. 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 I'm sorry, nerd. I don't watch that. No, like, I'm, I'm calling him a nerd. Like I know every fucking character. <laughs> I know, I like, look around, nerd. Um, look around. Yes. Uh, it's a beautiful title. And uh, I'm a little bummed because I think this is this is falling into some of that impact problem where not enough stuff is happening live on the TV broadcast. Yeah. They unveiled them in a package in the very beginning of the episode, and it would, you sh they showed Triple H there with Johnny Saint in something that we didn't see in the show. Gotcha. It was like at the uh, live event, and it was just sort of like, oh, this happening, and they unveiled it, but it was like, oh, wait, no. You just, wanted to see it during this whole show. Or just stuff. show me that whole segment. Well, ever since that SummerSlam, they're scared to reveal a belt in front of a crowd. Right. Um, but regardless, they look gorgeous. I can't wait to see who takes those. Uh, other than that, um, uh, not a ton of stuff happening other than... Uh, Holiday time. Like, There's a lot of like, hey, stuff's going to be coming. You know, sure, sure. Um, I, I do want to give a huge shout out, though, to Trent Seven and Joe Coffey, who put on an insane match. Just mean. Uh, sim it was like Orton fucking. Uh, no, it wasn't. Don't do it. I know you're gonna make the joke because I said fucking. It's not like Orton fucking somebody. It's like Orton. Oh, and then no. I was thinking of the name Rey Mysterio. I beat you two making fun of me ahead of you can doing it. It was like Orton. He and edited Mysterio. this, everybody. He <laughs> said it. He, he said, said it. Actually. We, we went on for seven minutes talking about it. He just cut all of it out. Um, I think that those two guys are close enough uh, where they can they just are. beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's really? what happens sometimes that's when you're fucking, you fucking a man. Uh, Trent Seven and Joe Coffey <laughs> annihilate each other. Yeah, they did. And <laughs> they prove that you don't have to put a cruiser. You have to be cruiserweights to put on like a actual like CWC style match where it was like great right. storytelling. Tons of technical moves. Also, another scary bump. I've never seen this in my entire life. A belly to belly from the apron to the floor. With a with guys the size of Joe Coffee and Trent Seven, Ugh. completely overhead. None of that twisty side that's, belly belly shit. That's terrible. Com don't don't do that. Ooh, don't that's do that. Unnecessary. Like that. You wait till Mania or something. Like don't Ooh. do that on that show. It was come on now. It was uh my it was my favorite murder. Fair and enough. yeah, that's all that was going on this week in NXT UK. Fair Those enough. shows continue to continue to be the best wrestling shows on TV, in my opinion. Well, until all the talent's gone and goes to the main roster. <laughs> until who does? Well, okay, a quick question. So this is six It's or never so going to be quick. We, we've been going on for like 25 yeah, yeah, yeah. minutes. Every well, question. that's why I'll cut you off. Uh, I won't let you just keep answering. If we're getting six people going to the main roster, who's coming? Who's coming to NXT? Whoever's in, whoever's in the uh, performance center. I, I'm asking you. I don't who's know who's coming. Shit, the hell if I know. Because uh, they made a whole bunch of signees well, was a couple months ago. So who knows they're going to start bringing Who, Jake? Up. Who comes up? To NXT? Yeah. Who, who gets to be on the actual show more? I, I don't think anybody really is going to be super new to me. I think people are just going to get more shots. I mean, the women's 
division seems to have a new face every week. Sure. Or like a face who was in the Mae Young Classic, but you still don't know her quite yeah. yet. Um, I think it's just, you know, here's the thing is all those people that they announced haven't been on NXT, NXT television for, for really a while. Except for EC3 that you just mentioned. Yeah, but he just came back after being injured for ages. Mm-hmm. So it's not like he's been like, I don't think NXT is going to all of a sudden suffer a big loss of talent is what I'm getting at. Because think about all the people who aren't getting called up, which yeah. are pretty much everybody with a title, everybody who is in the main thing, which except is, for heavy machinery. Uh, which is surprising because everybody thought that Adam Cole or somebody from the Undisputed Era was going up. Undisputed? Undisputed, uh, yeah. I'll, I'm not I'll the only that. one. See? All right, I'm not the only I'll one take, today. I'll take it. But some, we always thought one of the four was gonna, were going to get called up. Not me. I think you can't separate that group. They come up together or they come up, uh, they or they don't come up ever. Well, then I put it to the Compadres hotline out there. This if didn't work out so well last someone, time. <laughs> hey, no, I'm just putting it out there. If you guys want to call in. We're going to be taking the break, you know, and you let me know. Is there someone in developmental right now that you think is going to make their debut in NXT in this new coming year? Call the hotline. Better yet, let's go to the phones live right now. Caller. <laughs> oh, we don't have that type of technology. No, oh, that's that weird. Yet. But Santa called. Santa did call. It was very weird. Specifically for you. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> let's get back on track, fellas. Uh-huh. Wrestle Kingdom 13 is coming up January 4th. Our own Scott Narva and Mark Wurzecker will be breaking down the card for you guys. But let's go on to Impact Wrestling. Scott, this is your realm. Rich Swan defeats Dave Chris, and Trey Miguel defeats Trevor Lee to qualify for Ultimate X. I could write anything. I can tell that I you... I could write I was, anything there. I sure can. I was about to say, I can tell that he's, sure he's reading this. This is Anchorman. This. Fuck yes, you, San it, Diego. Yes, it is. I could write it, anything right there. Sure Jay will report it. I have not watched Impact in God knows how long. Uh, I'm Ron Burgundy? <laughs> Who put that question mark there? Uh, Let's yeah. do this. The Ultimate oh, X really? match. Ultimate X match is such a cool match. We got the four contenders all set up, and I think it's going to be interesting. These are unusual guys to be in there, and I think they'll have... Uh, uh, I mean, Trey Miguel and Rich Swann are more uh, uh, traditional contenders, but with Ethan Page uh, in the mix and uh, Jake Crist, think it's going to be uh, pretty bizarre and we're going to get a new champion obviously so uh and people do not so stuff in that match right do you have a do you have a preference going into that who who comes out champion well it seems like rich swan is the obvious answer right. he's uh, sort of the the hot guy there as far as i feel like yeah. every single time i do tune in he's a focal point or he's not necessarily a focal point, but he's putting on the best match. They're starting the show with him, yes. getting the crowd excited. Yeah, he's he's become like the Seth Rollins of four mm-hmm. months ago mm-hmm. uh, for for Impact. I feel like Trey Miguel is someone that they internally they know and they're really excited because he's part of the you know the the Rascals. Sure, those guys that are that, doing yeah that match crazy, from a couple weeks ago. I know. Oof. So I feel like internally someone's pushing for Trey Miguel, but this is someone I can see go. In. Any way, like it, it could be Jay Chris with OVE having a title. Right. It could be um, Ethan Page, and they're doing something really strange. He's the most unlikely, but right, right. I, I'd be pulling for uh, for which Rich Swan because I think uh, he can carry it well sure. and do good promos and right. be an interesting guy overall. And it would he's a, I think he's a good person to defend it. Yes. Versus like some of those guys, like they're just going to be better chasing. Because uh, w- one of the issues that they're just having is uh, everything in Impact Wrestling right now is all leading to something later. And what's happening in the moment isn't that important. Right. And I feel like he could be a guy that could give it stakes in the moment. I dig it. Right, oh. Jay? <laughs> I, I'm, not the, I'm not the impact dude. Every time you all go to impact, it's on you all. We get so. it. You're emailing your job at Chipotle. <laughs> no, I'm not emailing. First of all, I would never work at Chipotle. I'm going to say that from the bottom of my heart. Why not? Never. They give great benefits. Yeah, whatever. Uh, like money. Unlimited chips. <laughs> <laughs> You get all the. You got to pay for the guac. At home, coming in Nashville is going to be Tyre Valkyrie versus Tessa Blanchard, and they are going to have special guest referee returning Gail Kim. Mm-hmm. I, what made her decide? I thought she was just done with everything. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> okay. I mean, next, I don't, uh, to, next thing. So, uh, to what degree was she's working there or doing some amongst the office, something yeah. like that? I don't know, but you know, their home base is in Canada. She's Canadian. Um, so. Maybe they struck up a deal. Hey, maybe they're just trying to get catering done by Robert Irvine. I don't know. But uh, I think this is something needed also for Homecoming that you need a star of yeah. the past being it, involved. This is no different than like anything that Wrestle uh, that WrestleMania does where it's like, oh, we're going to have uh, Trish Stratus come back for one thing. And or, or Foley yeah. being the special guest referee right. for Hell in yeah. the Cell. Yeah. It's, uh, All that it's, type of stuff. It, honestly, 
People love her. Hey, I was gonna say that makes me want to watch the match more. So it works. Yeah, I, I go. Oh, I want to see Gail Kim. I want to see her smart move. And it's they didn't have to go a crazy stipulation. Just no. like no, just add some yeah. of the end. I, I love that people love. I love the guest referee. It's one of my favorite gimmicks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love specifically when there's not a clear like oh they have beef with this one person because that always to me seems like all right well now we don't have the story plays mm. out well but too I, bad that's not the case here oh uh, is that how it works yep all right well who is she who Tessa. is she. Tessa's got issues with the referees, oh. and she's got an issue with Gail. All right, so Taya, so Taya wins because she <laughs> gets help. Much. Or, or does, it seems like. Or, does, or is the story that, against all odds, Tessa wins? Could be, you know, but right. if you're going by, yeah. oh, okay, Before I've been watching this for 30 years, it's going to be this. How have you been watching for 30 years? You're not a year over 26. Oh, stop it. I just drank a uh, peppermint. <laughs> Candy cane. And Jesus Christ. And it sounded like Jay did. It sounds like Jay just coughed up a peppermint candy cane. It was, yeah. They make fruity ones. I know a couple weeks ago you had to rush to the bathroom. Do you need to rush to the hospital? <laughs> no, I've been there already. Uh, Good point. There was more fun between Raven and Eli Drake. I know, Scott, you what said was, you're a What fan. was the fun, Jay? I, I don't know. Nope. Nope. You let me live my life with this. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> what you can bust them on is go, uh, more fun? What was the previous fun? <laughs> Is yeah, there, that's true. Is their first segment again. Because more wasn't even written in there. That's right. So it's not like he was doing the Ron Burgundy thing. No. This is weird. The show is lived. unraveling. I lived. love it when Johnny's not here. <laughs> he hates it because he's like, damn it, I need these all these episodes for auditions. Um, Wait, what? <laughs> for auditions. He wants to make sure every compadres is great. So it makes him sound the best. Then he should just stay Wait. off the show because they're great when he's not around. Who's deleting all this in real time? You're getting rid of the numbers. You're getting rid of the formatting that I do. Bastards. Bastards, I made this sheet all clean. <laughs> I, you know how good I am at keeping this shit tight. Uh, so far, it's Yeah, because, you know, we're fucking one. Mysterio. I, uh, I, Raven and Eli Drake, it was an interesting segment between the two where Eli Drake goes into the same camera setups that was in the insane asylum when Eddie right. Edwards was in there. But I thought it was a fun uh, meeting of the generations because right. uh, WWE doesn't do that as much as I'd certainly like. And I don't get to see a lot of that in other companies. So I like it when... There's Eli Drake of this generation right. and EC Dub, original Raven, Raven yeah. and they're talking about like I don't like who you are, what you came from, and him going after, like yeah, you were a star, right? You were different and unique, and then everybody else r- rode your coattails. Of I know, I'll just be hardcore. I'll hit someone with a stick or a right. light tube, and right. I'll be famous and rich. Right. Like no, I am. I actually built a character. Yeah, uh, like I like that, and then him. Saying like, oh, so you watch, you see it on pay per view, and I'm gonna take a piss. I'm gonna beat him in his own game in Monsters Ball. Right, right. And then right. pay per view, uh, and then uh, <laughs> Raven just sits there and goes, "Oh yeah, we don't get pay per view in here." Right, <laughs> that's perfect. Like undercuts him, right, right. But then Eli Drake gets more yeah. pissed off. He's like, "Well, then get the app. I don't know." Right, right, just, right, right. You know, Raven is hilarious and incredibly quick, mm-hmm. uh, and so I'm sure he's doing great stuff there. I have two part question on Raven: Can he still sure. go? And two, why is his intro so long? Um, he's I, a genius. I don't. He's a genius. I don't know if he can still go because no. all he's been doing are these vignettes. Uh, oh, I mean, it, I guess it was more of a like opinion poll. Does he still go? Like, can do you think Raven can still go? Uh, by looks, right now, yeah. his hair's white. Yeah, he's really heavy. Yeah. He looks- um. So when you see that, and if you're to dress him up and just throw him out there. I think the initial reaction is going to be like, oh, he reminds me of Bret Hart. Be out there right he reminds now. me of Bret Hart. I know that that's a weird comparison to make. Yeah. But like when Bret Hart came back and was doing that little, when he first came back and it was like, oh my God, he's back in WWE and he was Post wrestling at Mania. And yeah. With Miz and yeah. all that. And it's just like, oh, like I just, that's what Raven looks like right now to me. And so I'm I curious. hope he feels great and it, that if he wanted to, that he could. Right. Um, but if he's not good to go, like just pay him to do yeah. segments. Raven but. not doing DDP yoga. <laughs> Hey, that. but he could. Right. <laughs> All right, y'all. Now it's time to go to Scott Narva and Mark Wazeka with their breakdown for Wrestle Kingdom 13 coming up January 4th. All right. I am sitting here with New Japan Pro Wrestling's own Mark Wazeka, host, commentator. Man does it all. Get in the ring already. <laughs> <laughs> I do not take bumps. <laughs> Don't hurt me. <laughs> uh, Wrestle Kingdom. 13. Yes. January 4th. Are you excited? Yeah, I am excited. This show's awesome. The lineup is stacked. It's going to be great. What are you looking forward to most on the show? You know, um, ew, that is a t- that's tough. Uh, the first thing that pops to mind, though, is the main event. I'm excited about the main event. 
I'm excited to see Tanahashi uh, back in the main event at Wrestle Kingdom. I think he and Omega is going to be fantastic. It feels pretty fresh. They haven't had a million matches with each other. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I uh, I think it's a, uh, Omega's as good as he's ever been. Absolutely at the top of his game. Maybe the best wrestler in the world today. And Tanahashi on this incredible comeback. I mean, people thought that that was it. He was in the twilight of his career. He was fading out to the mid card. And here he's had this amazing resurgence in 2018 and is back in the main event to everyone's surprise and 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 earned it. And it's believable. And he's the guy still got it. What brought the resurgence back? Like for a guy uh, that was at the top, is he just wrestling in the mid card and people are losing interest? And then what was it like? How how does that come to be? It's interesting because I think from his point of view, I think he felt like uh, I've never lost it. Like, I'm still the guy. Right. I'm still the best guy. And he was still training like he was the best guy. And he was still wrestling like he was the top guy. I think in his mind and his heart and his soul, this guy honestly believed and believes I'm still the ace. Like, I haven't lost a step. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to prove it. And he was hampered with injuries, you know, for a little while. Right. And he had some. And so that slowed him down. Yeah, I mean, that slowed him down. And he's at recovery from those injuries and is feeling much better. He's 41 years old. Sure, he's banged up. He's had a hard, long career. Mm-hmm. But he's moving better than he than he had in the last couple of years. And I think that made a big difference for him. DDP yoga? It's got to be, right? <laughs> I mean, it heals anything. You have the inside track, Mark. It I don't heals, know. It heals everything. <laughs> okay, so that's obviously huge. That is the main event that is of the, the show. The main event is for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. It'll go on last. And, uh, yeah, it should be epic. One thing, uh, as we get through the rest of the card that, uh, from what I've noticed in the past for a lot of new Japan pro wrestling matches, uh, uh, counter to what WWE is WWE. We see a lot of run-ins. We see a lot of interference. We see a lot of like weapons and, uh, stipulations and stuff. That's typically not the case in new Japan pro wrestling. Correct. The, yes. There are very, very few stipulation matches. Almost none. They do occur, but they're extremely rare. Mm-hmm. Um, there are; it's a very, very rare that you would see a run in or a disqualification. Uh, and if it happens, it would happen on uh, extreme occasions and only for a uh, purpose. So, like the expectation going into a show like Wrestle Kingdom is you're going to see a, you're going to see a winner and a loser in every single match. That's so unique when you're just in the world of American wrestling. Yes. When you might watch a show and you go like, oh, that's another, no, oh, that's a schmoz or that's a DQ. Like, come on. I want to see someone win. Yeah. I mean, I think it's part of the reason that New Japan is so rewarding for a lot of fans and so um, appealing to a lot of longtime uh, U.S. fans who get fed up after a while of... All the run-ins, all the count-outs, all the DQs, all uh, the, uh, those supposed storytelling elements, mm-hmm. they just aren't used that much in New Japan Pro Wrestling. You get winners and losers almost every single time. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it's one of my favorite things about New Japan Pro Wrestling. Well, something that I'm really excited about, one of the matches that has me interested is the IWGP Intercontinental Championship yes. match. Yes. Chris Jericho. Yes. Versus Tetsuya Naito. Yes. Tell me a little bit about Naito. I know all about Jericho. Naito's career path in New Japan is amazing. Okay. So, you know, he comes in and he's being groomed to be one of the top guys. This is going to be the new bait, one of the new or the new top babyface champion. Okay. You can very much parallel parallel his career path to Roman Reigns' career path in WWE. Up to a point, I hope. Up to a point, and in a, a really important point, a really important point. So think of Naito coming in. Hey, this is and the promotion kind of going. This is going to be the new top babyface guy. Okay, we're building him up. We're pushing him. We're pushing him. Mm-hmm. Same thing happened with Naito. As what happened in WWE with Roman Reigns, he's getting pushed. He's getting pushed. He's getting pushed. Mm-hmm. He gets pushed. Naito does to a point that even the New Japan fans, who are a lot more generally polite and respectful, because <laughs> Japanese culture is more polite and respectful uh-huh. than most of the rest of the world, even the New Japan fans start to go, 
we don't like this anymore. <laughs> and they start to boo him. Wow. They start to boo him just the way Roman Reigns was getting booed. When you think about the Royal Rumble when he won that year that right. everybody wanted Daniel Bryan to win and he got right. booed out of the building. Right, right, right. So they start to resent him and boo him. So this is the point where their two career paths go in much different directions, and this is key. Okay. So at that moment where everybody in WWE was going, Roman Reigns should turn heel, but he didn't turn heel, and like four years went by where he's still getting booed all the time. Right. Instead, in New Japan, Naito turns heel. At that moment where the, where the crowd has had it with him, mm-hmm. he does turn heel. He turns heel, and he has the, tur- the heel turn, that you would think you would have in that scenario that people wanted Roman Reigns to have in that scenario. Right. He turns heel on the fans and on the promotion and says, I hate all your guts. I hate New <laughs> Japan. I'll work here still, but I don't respect this company anymore. And I'm going to win and win and win, but I'm not going to care anymore. I'm not going to play to the fans. I'm not going to play to the crowd. And he comes out with a new faction, LIJ. And he comes out with a new attitude, tran- Tranquilo, where he wrestles like this slow kind of methodical style to mm-hmm. irritate the fan base <laughs> when he finally wins belts he wins the uh the intercontinental title he okay. destroys the belt he smashes it up he throws it over his shoulder uh to show really? his yes to sh- get his revenge and show his disrespect for the fans of the promotion and it worked so well that now he's one of the most popular characters and, and figures in new japan pro wrestling because it got it just got over so huge that he is uh, beloved now, and, uh, and oh, really, a, yeah, is he still remaining the same character? Yes. yes, it's sort of like when Stone Cold Steve Austin went from heel to babyface, and it's like he still was that guy, yeah. But like now we love him, right? Yeah, and like Becky Lynch now, and, and Becky same... Lynch too. Yes, wow, I I can't even tell you what you've done to that match. Like it's <laughs> oh, like oh good. cool, I can see Jericho in Japan. That's kind of weird, and it's like oh he's fighting somebody I don't know about. But now I'm so excited to see yes. Naito from what you described. Naito's awesome. He was the Intercontinental Champion. Jericho destroyed him mm-hmm. at Dominion back in June, uh, which is sort of like the second biggest New Japan show of the year is Dominion in June. So Jericho Jericho kicked his ass. Jericho took him apart, won the title. So now this is Naito's chance uh, at revenge. It's his rematch. Interesting. Okay. What's a sleeper match? What's the match that maybe... When you're looking at the card and you go, okay, here's what we got. What's the one that might surprise people? What's um, the one that they might not expect to be the runaway hit? I think Tomohiro Ishii versus Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, for the Rev Pro uh, British Heavyweight title could be awesome. Okay. Uh, a lot of fans are really, maybe it's not that much of a sleeper in that these two guys are really respected and beloved everywhere. They wrestle all over the world. Right. But they tend to be, or at least lately have tended to be more mid card under card guys but fans really believe in them and justifiably so so this is the first time that either one of these guys are getting like a high profile singles title match on a wrestle kingdom card Mm -hmm. and you know i think they're gonna go out there and kill it so like that's one i definitely watch okay that brings up something also almost all of these matches are for a championship and they're yeah. not all New Japan Pro Wrestling Championships. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, New Japan has partnerships with different promotions around the world. CMML in Mexico, mm-hmm. uh, ROH, Rev Pro. So there's, you know, alliances like the uh, the Madison Square Garden show in April. Uh, WrestleMania weekend is a joint ROH New Japan show. And they have good partnerships. So talent will go back and forth. Who's got the coolest looking belt? <laughs> I think New Japan has the coolest. <laughs> the IWGP Heavyweight Title is awesome. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, I do recall it now. It's pretty cool looking. Oh yeah, it's cool looking. Okay, so uh, Cody versus Juice Robinson. Yes, for the IWGP United States Championship. Yes, that is another one I'm looking forward to, and obviously because I'm more familiar with these characters. Yes, you know Cody, of course. From- yeah. 
what the hell was his faction with? <laughs> I was going to try to do a, a bit about it, and I can't oh, remember. Oh, the Bullet it Club? Called. No, with um, with Randy Orton and... Uh, <laughs> oh. and, and he, Legacy. Legacy. I couldn't think of what it was. <laughs> Legacy, yes. Oh, do you think Ted DiBiase Jr. is coming in? I mean, I think it's very likely he's going to do a run in <laughs> <laughs> with Virgil. Yeah, it'll be the they'll be like, guys, you don't get it. That's not what we do here. <laughs> but, um, you know, of course, in the time that Cody's left WWE, uh, it's really been his career path's been unbelievable. Mm-hmm. When you think back to when he left, I remember when he first left WWE and he he was posting on Twitter his list of goals, the guys he wanted to wrestle. Right. People laugh. I mean, everyone was just laughing at him. No one thought he was going to be successful outside of WWE. Everyone was very skeptical of his chances. It seemed like those were uh, matches that would be very low profile. Yes. You know, like the the idea of like, oh, that'll be at a at a bingo hall. That'll be at a you know a high school gym. Yeah, no big deal. But and these turned out to be high profile matches. Yeah, they're selling out the Sears Center uh, in Chicago. You know, for all in in twenty minutes so with whatever that was, sixteen thousand fans. Yeah. So um, you being one of them, it it may be one of them. And that's their, you know, that's that's on them. Like that's Cody and the Young Bucks. Like that was their show. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's pretty, pretty remarkable. But uh, he is the um, the United States champion Mm -hmm. uh, in New Japan right now. And he won the title from Juice Robinson just a couple months ago here in um, in Long Beach, California Mm -hmm. at Fighting Style Unleashed. And he is. uh, So Juice Robinson gets his rematch. Mm -hmm. And if you remember Juice from. Uh, his NXT days, yes, where he was a much different uh, character, very colorful. Yes, uh, I'm trying to CJ Parker. I yes, think. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he um, cared about the environment. Sure. Yeah, he was the original environmental character before Daniel Bryan. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he's forget that. Forget that. Take that guy out of your head. Mm-hmm. I mean, Juice Robinson is amazing in New Japan pro wrestling. He's mean. He's grown in leaps of in bounds. He's definitely got a killer instinct to him. He's got an edge to him. He is on the upswing in New Japan. Uh, he's got a tremendous fan base. When he originally won that U.S. title in July uh, in San Francisco at the Cobb Palace, it was awesome. Mm-hmm. The reaction was incredible. So it should be a cool match. There's, uh, yeah, it's 10 matches, uh, and we have also um, the open weight six-man championship number one contenders match in the pre-show. Yeah. So what's that going to be? It's a gauntlet match. Okay. Yeah, there's going to be, you know, one thing that's different about uh, Wrestle Kingdom this year is there is no New Japan Rumble. <laughs> so the, oh, okay. the New Japan Rumble was usually the pre-show match. Uh-huh. And it's a Royal Rumble style match. Right. But I think competitors would enter every minute and um, you could pin each other. You could pin or submit, I believe, in it as well. OK. Uh, for elimination. And, but it was sort of a it was sort of a comedy match. It'd be a combination of comedy characters mm-hmm. or old legends that are coming back as a surprise right so it wasn't really a vital element of the show mm-hmm. uh but this uh gauntlet match i think there's five teams in it mm-hmm. a lot of great wrestlers in it uh so it's a trios gauntlet match whoever wins that thing is going to wrestle for the uh never open weight uh, six man titles uh the next night at I new see. year dash in oh Cor- in cork and hall right yes yeah i might have an opportunity to go to that yeah right we should mention that you're going to be at uh, mm-hmm. at Wrestle Kingdom alive and in person. Well, when we went to the show um, in Anaheim, we saw a New Japan Pro Wrestling show. Yeah. I immediately got hooked on uh, Tamaguchi. Uh-huh. So I was like, all right, that's it. I'm going. Mm-hmm. Is he going to be in any of this? Is he confirmed? I can't. I don't know. What would you say to this <laughs> Lincoln right here? <laughs> $5. <Done. laughs> um. All right, uh, someone else I know you've worked with quite a bit mm. who's in Rapungi 3K, Rocky Romero. Yeah, Rocky is the producer and director of Rapungi 3K. Don't call him a manager. He does not want to be called a manager. Don't do that? No, don't do that. So if I happen to see him over in Japan, <laughs> don't go, hey, you're that manager of Rapungi no. 3K. He likes producer or director. Okay. This match is uh, for the IWGP Junior uh, Tag Team Championships. Mm-hmm. It's a triple threat match. 
So you have the current champions who are El Desperado and Kanemaru, mm-hmm. and they are taking on Rapungi 3K, who are uh, former champs, two-time former champs, and they are also taking on the LIJ team. This is part of Naito's faction of El Desperado and um, uh, uh, Shingo, who is uh, a Dragon Gate star who debuted just a couple months ago Mm -hmm. in uh, New Japan. So it should be... um that should be a pretty cool match. Oh, I'm sorry. I said El Desperado. It's Bushi and Shingo. Oh, okay. But um, I said El Desperado twice. <laughs> Bushi and Shingo <laughs> are the LIJ team. So Shingo Takagi and uh, Bushi are the LIJ team. But this is a rematch from the Best of the Super Junior uh, Tag League, which is like a round robin uh, junior tag team tournament, which happened this fall. Mm-hmm. And this was the finals. And uh, Rapungi 3K won, but it's non-title. They won the tournament, but not the titles. Gotcha. So it's going to be a rematch of that match, and that was an awesome match. I mean, these are three fantastic junior teams. Fascinating. Okay. Um, all right. So let me ask you this. As someone that doesn't watch New Japan Pro Wrestling regularly, mm-hmm. say I was back home in the States and I was going to be hanging out with friends watching it, like what, what about New Japan Pro Wrestling's Wrestle Kingdom is different than the other things that we've mentioned that should make me want to watch this show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's probably not going to be a Pete Rose appearance. (laughs) So if you hope every year, how about it? (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's a very, uh, you know, it is like WrestleMania is the pinnacle of the WWE year. Right. Wrestle Kingdom is the pinnacle of the new Japan year. And, um, you know, it's a huge dome show. It's in Tokyo in the Tokyo Dome. There'll be forty or fifty thousand people there. So that's it's a pretty awesome environment. And um, you know, I it's certainly my opinion that um New Japan Pro Wrestling puts on the best in ring product in the world. The athleticism I think is the best in the world. The storytelling in the ring is the best in the world. And I think th- these are some of the best professional wrestlers in the world. So, uh, you know, if you like great professional wrestling, if you like good in ring action, it's going to be moving at a, at a, at a quick pace. They pack a lot into this show. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, you like athletic pro wrestling. I mean, there's not a lot, but you know, no band is going to come out and play. There's not going to be a musical <laughs> guest. There are not backstage segments. It's wrestling and storytelling in the ring with winners and losers. If you like that part of pro wrestling, uh, this should be a great show for you. Yeah, that's uh, it's it's really weird to talk to you about it when we have conversation, you know, off mic and stuff like that about it because it's because it is wrestling. Yeah. And, you know, we always call what is sports entertainment wrestling as well. Right. But when you hear the different styles about it, you go like, oh, God, it's so weird. There's no segments. There's no. You know, maybe someone will. Uh, I, the Wrestle Kingdom that we watched uh, years ago. Yeah, we with, watched a couple years ago when it was on pay per view here. Yeah, Jim Ross. Where Jim was Ross one called of the it with Matt Striker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, where I think maybe we saw like once or twice someone got on the mic post match, right, and acknowledging the crowd and talking to them, but it was in. Uh, it wasn't screw you. I'm it. That's it. I'm out of here. It wasn't any of that. It was. It's very much like thank you for this opportunity. And uh, I respect you all. Like, good night. Yes. And they're thrilled. Yeah. They love that. Yeah. Yeah. There are no, um, there are no, like, literally throughout the entirety of Wrestle Kingdom and really all New Japan shows, there is never a backstage segment. There's never a backstage interview. There's never a backstage promo. There's never anything remotely like, you know, an opening of Monday Night Raw where people come out and talk on the mic and a general manager and anything. There's nothing mm-hmm. like that. Ever throughout the entire show, it's matches in the ring. And like you said, the, the you know, the, it is traditional for the winner of the main event match to then take the microphone and give a post a brief post match speech and celebration. But that's mm-hmm. it. Otherwise, it's wrestling. It's wrestling. And you've been to Japan. Yes. In a professional capacity yeah. with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that experience. Like, what's it like being a Westerner and going there and also as working for the company? Yes. I mean, it's cool. It's interesting because, you know, you're it's a Japanese product in Japan. 
for a Japanese fan base. Uh-huh. So you're like, oh, we're the Spanish announce table. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, like that's who we are. That's that's who we are there. <laughs> so, so commentating live for, and our table got destroyed. My first show in. <laughs> Uh, I was announcing with Kevin Kelly, and our first night was uh, Kenny Omega versus Tomohiro Ishii in the main event for the championship. Mm-hmm. And Kenny put Ishii through our table. Oh, my God. W- with a springboard double stomp from the top rope over the guardrail through our table on the outside, which was unbelievable. Well, clearly you called it correctly as it was happening. <laughs> No, I just figured it out later. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is that in the moment? But uh, yeah, so yeah, they did destroy our table on the first night out. Wow. But uh, it's fascinating. I mean, you know, you do get some sense when you're watching um, when you're watching any Japanese wrestling, not just New Japan, from Japan, mm-hmm. when it's happening in Japan, the fans react differently than they do in other parts of the world because they're generally... Uh, quieter Mm -hmm. they're not when they're really into a match and really focused on it they may be totally and completely silent and then they'll pop when something really big happens so at what point in which match should i start chanting for cm punk (laughs) oh just all throughout oh okay yeah it's always appropriate (laughs) you know what chant is really we'll really (laughs) get over they'll love me over there (laughs) but i said you know this i think on our second night uh, I was broadcasting with Kevin Kelly and we went out about 10 minutes early and just sat at the table and got set up and got prepped. And mm-hmm. I said, uh, and we were in um, a city called um, Beppu. And I said to Kevin, like, cause it was a full house. I think that arena had maybe 4,000 people. Okay. And it was families. It was a national holiday that day in Japan. So it was a lot of families. Okay. Grandparents, parents, and a lot of kids. And it's about 10 minutes before the show. And I said to Kevin, like, wow, this crowd might be this crowd might be really dead tonight, huh? Uh-huh. And he said, why? Because we're sitting there ringside and the show's about to start in five minutes. And it's almost completely silent in this arena of 4,000 people. <laughs> and he said, this is just how it is. It's just a different culture. They're excited. They're ready. They're just sitting politely and respectfully waiting for the show to begin. And he was right. They were super into the show. Once it started, they were a hot crowd for the for the big matches. So they're not even chatting amongst themselves. No, no, no. that was the part that threw me because that, that's not even like a, a Western theater crowd where, you know, they're going to watch a show. They're much uh, they're quiet all throughout and they're polite. But beforehand, everyone's there and they would be chatting with one another. Yeah, they're that's- just sitting nicely, excited, ready to go. Politely waiting for the show to begin. I'm going to get in so much trouble. I'm going to be sitting there with Dale and I'm going to be like, hey, <laughs> I'm sorry for this. Jericho, and now I've heard about Naito. And I'll get elbowed in the But side they'll be too polite to even react to you. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> like, hey, I hear CM Punk's coming. <laughs> okay. So you, you've, you've been there. You worked with it. You've seen it. You've, so what, if you were there live, mm-hmm. what's the match that you would want to be there live for? What's the match that, is going to be electric in the crowd. You know what? I think a lot of these matches will be, you know, electric because I think the stories have been so good heading into them mm-hmm. and have built for months or even longer. The uh, there's two to come that come to mind though for me. I think um, Okada versus Switchblade Jay White is going to be awesome. That is a a match that's been a year in the making, mm-hmm. and uh, when it finally goes down one on one at wrestle kingdom i think it's going to be really electric in that arena okada is probably the most popular you know figure in new japan right now i mean it's a close call between him and naito and tanahashi but okada was champion that in his record-breaking title reign this last couple years i'm familiar with okada some yeah he's incredible amazing he's amazing so like that's gonna and jay white's on fire right now he's Mm -hmm. just he turned on Okada. He turned on Okada's faction of chaos. He j- Jay White and had joined the Bullet Club, mm-hmm. and now this will be their first big one-on-one match since that happened. So that'll be exciting. And then the other one that really could be a match of the year is Kota Ibushi versus Will Osprey, uh, which is a dream match. Mm-hmm. Um, these guys are the two two of the most innovative. Uh, f- um, professional wrestlers anywhere on earth today and if you're if you're listening to this and you have not seen them 
Like, just Google either one of them. Kota Ibushi highlights, you mm-hmm. know, or Will Ospreay highlights, and you'll find a million things on YouTube with just highlight packages of what these guys are both capable of, and it's they're, they're unreal. Um, and so the two of them against each other is going to be pretty pretty cool. New Japan is pretty strict about the... Um, well, and I guess WWE is uh, somewhat now, too, but they're pretty strict about the divisions, the light heavyweight division and the heavyweight division. Right. So currently, Kota Ibushi is a heavyweight, and Will Ospreay is a junior heavyweight. Okay. But they have this title called the Never Openweight title. Okay. That anybody from either division can can hold or wrestle for. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Like so you catch have weight. Uh, yes. That's totally. how we refer to it here. So these two men ordinarily would not be facing each other in a singles match because they are in different divisions. Mm-hmm. But um, Abushi just won the never open weight title. So he is a heavyweight can defend it against Will Ospreay, who is a junior heavyweight. Wow. So it's a dream match between two guys that we really haven't seen before in a, in a one-on-one sense like this. Wow. Okay. So what do people need to know, Mark? How can they get it? How can they watch it? Oh, well, New Japan World. So NJPW, NJPWworld.com. It's like WWE Network, but for New Japan, mm-hmm. it's 999 yen Ooh. a month, which comes out usually with the exchange rate to like yeah, 875 or something like that, U.S. dollars at least. Ooh, nice. A month. So you can, uh, you, you can uh, navigate that in English. There is an English tab at the top of that website. And you can sign up for that. That is the cheapest and best way to watch Wrestle Kingdom. You can watch it mm-hmm. live or it's immediately available on demand right after the show ends. And then uh, it is also available on um, on the Fight app. Oh, uh, really? This, yeah, uh, this year as well. That's pretty cool. I think, frankly, it's like it's I think it's a lot more on there. <laughs> like if you if you do it that way. Uh-huh. But it is available on that, too. So if you're a Fight app user, you're more comfortable with that app. It is available on there, too. So and it will have English commentary. Oh, okay. Yes, on the fight app. On both. Oh, on both. Yes. Oh, okay. On New Japan World on the fight app, there will be English commentary. Any bold predictions, Mark? Um, I think that you and Dale will have a great time. <laughs> Anything beyond that? I think that you'll. Um, I think that you'll enjoy the Taco Bell at the Tokyo Dome. Really. No, not really. It doesn't taste quite right. <laughs> Damn it, Mark. Who should I put money on? <laughs> Are you planning to bet? Uh, I, I mean, no. <laughs> How do I turn this thing off? Uh, thanks, Mark. Where can people follow you as well? Oh, I'm at, um, at Twitter at Mark Wars, M-A-R-C-W-A-R-Z. All right. Well, thanks, Mark. Thanks for giving us a rundown of the show. I'm beyond hyped for Naito now. Yeah. Oh, good. Like you've, you've painted this uh, amazing portrait of him. And I, I can't wait to see the video package between those two because that sounds super cool. He's awesome. And this version of Jericho in New Japan, the character that Jericho is playing in New Japan, unlike anything he ever did anywhere mm-hmm. else in his career, it's awesome. If you haven't seen New Japan Jericho, you got to Google it. It's worth checking out. Any other final words for someone like me who, you know, if I wasn't going there, maybe I wouldn't be watching. What can you say to those who are listening to the compadres, Mark? It's a good to if you have been curious about New Japan uh, and wanting to check it out. Uh, it's a good it's a good place to start Wrestle Kingdom with the biggest show of the year. And, you know, I should plug our um, our videos if I could, too, which sure. is um, one of the things I do with New Japan is I uh, make this video series called the New Japan Wire or just the wire. That's how I learned about Sl- Switchblade Jay White. Really? Mm hmm. Yeah. So if you go on. Uh, New Japan's uh, English YouTube or their Facebook or their Twitter or even on New Japan World. We have this video series called The Wire, and we've done – they're short videos. They're less than five minutes, and they sort of explain some of the characters and the storylines going on in New Japan right now. And we cover uh, some of the big um, Wrestle Kingdom matches that we've talked about here. We cover some Jericho stuff, some Naito stuff. We've covered Okada versus Jay White. We've covered the the junior heavyweight title match, Kushida versus Ishimori. So we've got some of the uh, we covered uh, uh, Ishii versus um, ZSJ, too. So we've got some of the stories in the background in some of these matches on those wire videos. Cool. Super cool. And who will you be cosplaying as while watching it? Uh, you know, probably Asuka. <laughs> it's got you excited, huh? Yeah. Uh, Dale and I will be there at Wrestle Kingdom. Ooh, going, first time going to Japan? Mm-hmm. 
I've been wa- that's the place I've been wanting to go my entire life. And yeah, so it's show finally happening. Places. Why? Uh, what about why it is Delgar showing me about the place? <laughs> No, I know why, because he's absolutely obligated to, and he's not going to be able to shake you. Yeah, that's right. You're very tough to get He has of. a sash. He's an ambassador. <laughs> uh, it's it's the most like Wonderful being... time. I'm sorry. Well, it is. It's the holiday season. Uh, it's the most like visiting another planet that is still <laughs> that's, safe. That's fair. <laughs> very fair. That's the best assessment I think I've ever heard of going it's a, to. It's a completely different culture. Yeah, yeah. It's very futuristic looking. Like it's a whole Blade Runner feel where like there's so much neon and signs and everything's a different language and different. Have you ever seen real photos or do you only watch Japanese anime? Because I'm worried that your expectations might be slightly different. Uh, I know we all loved Akira, but I'm not sure if you know exactly what to expect. I'm Scott, also, is, Scott is waiting to see a girl whine and he just come out sideways like Meh! Why'd you call it Japanese anime? It's just called anime. Oh, well. I always, I always, Busted nerd. I always oh, look it. who's Tokyo. Oh, Hermione oh. Granger, that bitch. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I also, I love the food. I love Japanese food. Oh. Like nothing else. I'd eat it every day if I could. What about um, that place we went to, Osaka Barbecue? That's right around the corner here that day. It was all right. Yeah, it was just all right. I wanted to I take agree. you to a better place, and you're like, yeah, look, wait a little time. Like, it's really close. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I, I'm stoked. I've always wanted to go with my brother, who's, uh, you know, we watch wrestling ever since growing up, and he's also wanted to go to Japan, right. and he now has three kids, and he's- So his like, life is over. Happily pissed. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, know? I get it, yeah. Um, and he's like, damn it, you know, I should have gone back. Damn, I have a, damn it, I have an enriching family life. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, so I'm going, and Dale and I are going to have a blast, and we're going to hopefully do some videos, and, you know, have some stuff to show you guys, because it's going to be weird. It's going to be weird. It's going to be cool. Psst. I, I'm I'm containing my excitement on here. Awesome. It's going to be rad. Man, glad to hear that. Hope you guys enjoy it and have a safe and fun trip. Uh, So we, this is our last, like I said, last live. Jake, what are you going to do during the holidays? Uh, I'm, I'm, going to my, I'm going to my brother's house. I don't think we're going to do this. I don't think, I don't think we have time for this. I okay. want to do it, but I don't think we have time for okay. this. Okay. Uh, also, it's not our last live. Stop saying that. Well, it, it's well, not, but, I know what you're saying, but it's expectations. Just uh, forget it. Like, okay. we'll, we'll actually... <laughs> Uh, let me, let me, let me do something real quick. If you gotcha. don't mind, let's, let me bring us to the ending. Um, so I think that about covers, uh, this week, um, next week and the week following, we will be doing best of episodes, uh, where we're going to sit down together and we're going to, you know, reminisce about the year as well as, uh, revisit some of our favorite moments and interviews. Mm. Uh, and it's going to be delightful. Um, but I have a, I have a question that I want to put delightful. out. Delightful. Um, it's, listen. When we don't have Johnny, we don't have to worry about the soundboard. I just felt like we should have it. We don't no. need an additional soundboard. Wonderful. Thanks. At least you're not doing what? Whatever the fuck Alicia Fox does. Um, I want to put this question out to the compadres listeners because uh, it definitely started uh, when Johnny stopped showing up as much. Uh, and the three of us would start kind of taking the reins off. We have began to consistently put out shows that push... An hour forty-five, an hour fifty uh, minutes, um, and, and I ain't talking about ROH. Yeah, I, and I yeah, and we didn't talk about ROH. Well, I I want some sincere input. I know all of the compadres here have a different uh, opinion on this. Have the shows this past month and change been too long for you? Do you like a tight ninety-minute show or or even an hour, or do you not mind more? Uh, there is a lot of wrestling, and in order for us to have actual conversations, these past few mo- uh, months, I have thoroughly enjoyed this show. I think we've had much more real conversation. I think we've been able to dive into specific things a lot, you know, in more detail. Uh, and I thoroughly enjoy it. But I want to know if you guys think, guys, let's let's wrap this shit up around an hour and a half <laughs> tops. Uh, if you feel that way, please let us know. Um, you know, w- whether it via our Twitter or social media or you know. Even the shoot, hotline. Shoot, uh, shoot the hotline, yeah. Or uh, or email the aforementioned contact at dragonwagonradio.com uh, or just go to the compadreshow.com and click contact. Uh, I want your opinion because I feel like every episode we've been doing where once I see it start creeping towards 120 and I realize that we haven't even covered, you know, whatever what, what's happened on SmackDown or what's happened on, on uh, Impact this week, I feel like I, I'm starting to worry that, like, oh, crap, we're just making these long shows. And I don't know. I want the, I want the thoughts. Agree? Agreed. Agreed. All right. So make sure you guys rate and review us on iTunes. Listen, if it's been a while since you've done a review, go back and send another review. It helps boost up the podcast and the algorithm. More people get to see it. It's more visible. And we want more people to do this. Share the podcast, spread the word, and spread the love. 
Um, the Compadre's New Year res- res- reviews. Of this, this. <laughs> and I actually don't blame you. That's a terrible pun. <laughs> the Compadre's New Year review solution. Now, most of, like I said, most of our reviews are old, and they mention Nerd as Fox, old personalities, bad production, unfortunate stream days, everything that Johnny LaQuasto decided to write. So just go ahead and rewrite your new reviews on itunes all right and i want to say thank you to all of our patreon palskis without you guys we probably wouldn't be here as much and we love you guys for all the bonus content that you all want and we can give to you all aj0314 alex pierce alex alex pierce alice raider andrea biller brian collins Brittany m kitchens charles Schofield, edwin carley edwin a santos gavin provost johan pena kevin nuzo mass llama matt salgado mike mickey beltran nick glancy one and only nuggets Paisley Darts, Pete Garit, Tim Venus, Tom Hader, Tony Griggs, Wayne Lynch, and Zach Oyafuso. So thank you all. We appreciate you all so much. Uh, Scott Narver, put yourself over. You can find me on social media at Scott Narver. And you know what? If you're looking for a movie for the holidays, well, there's plenty to choose from. But why not get something that's not meant for the holidays like Dave Made a Maze? Available on DVD. Blu-ray, hey, you can get that Amazon Prime, get it there for the holidays for you, and it's available on digital platforms everywhere, and by God, if you love wrestling so much, and you love YouTube just like Jay, well, there's On Your Mark, the greatest wrestling shoot interview series of all time, the champ, he's been on this show, Marky Extreme, gotta watch it, youtube.com slash On Your Mark Show. Yeah, Jake Lloyd, go ahead and Jake over yourself. Uh, find me on Twitter at Liquid Jake, on Instagram at Jake Lloyd. Make sure you're following all of the fantastic podcasts on Dragon Wagon Radio, including my shows, Elaborate, and Dungeons and Dragon Wagon. Uh, we are getting to the end of our first season, and holy shit, is that adventure bananas. Uh, as well as, you know what, let's tout some other crap. Uh, the Board Web Series dot com. Uh, or just search hashtag the board web series. It's this great little kind of anti sketch show that uh, has been up for quite a few years now. But, you know, let's get some new eyes on that. You'll catch some familiar faces like Johnny LaQuasto and even Austin Aries. Super fun. Also, I don't think I ever realized this, but I'm on an a- I'm on a show on Amazon Prime called Cat starring an actual cat voiced by Kesha. And apparently I'm on some Christmas episode that was edited down from 20 minutes to like four minutes. <laughs> so I don't know if there's really much on there, but I would be curious to see if anybody is even watching that shit. Curious like a cat? cat. Uh, which might kill you, apparently. Mm. Uh, and I also just want to tout um, uh, this new trio that Scott Narver, Jay Washington, and I are starting. Uh, we are, of course, the Mumble Mouth Bunch. And uh, we're going to be starting a brand new series where we can, can't get single words out edgewise. <laughs> Hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned for more Christian wise. <laughs> no, his name is Chris. It's Rezo. Oh. Follow Johnny LaQuasto at J Quasto and follow Dale Rutledge at the walking Dale. Make sure you check him out on IGN and dishing on movies. Also, we didn't specify the reason Dale wasn't here this week is because his brother got married. Congratulations. Congratulations to the Rutledge clan for another new family member. Nice. Congratulations to Dale. Find me on Twitter and Instagram at Mr. J Washington, M-R-J-A-Y. W-A-S-H-I-N-G-T-O-N. I don't know why I spelled it all out, but I wasn't supposed to, but whatever. Uh, check out the Mad Titan podcast, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify. Get you caught up on everything happening in the Marvel and DC live action universes. And just like you are getting Dave made a maze for a stocking stuffer for people for Christmas, you can get the new movie. I'm in Glass Jaw as well. So give them two DVDs in one stocking. Give them a two download codes, Amazon.prime. Let them have all of the viewing pleasure that they should. Double right. feature. Double feature. What are you going to do? Hang out with your family the whole time? God, no. Jesus. Watch a movie. Watch some good movies that we're in, damn it. All right. With that being said, we will holler at you guys next week with our best of. Take care. We're out of here. Peace. It's Dragon Wing. Bam, 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 bam. Yes, yes, yes. I'm just going to do all the stingers live now. <laughs> it's more exciting. Yeah. <laughs>